we're live. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny's Kevin Smith's View Ask Universe in Review Universe. I did that for all the people in the comments wow. asking me to do it a million times, time and time again. That was just for you. Shout out to all of you for being there in the YouTube comments. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Nick Scarpino, Kevin hey, Carlo, Andy Cortez, and Greg Miller. Every week here on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games, we review and rank movies live like the Kevin Smith View Ask Universe. We do that every Tuesday. We do the Transformers movies every Friday. Then after that, we're going to be doing the Lord of the Rings movies. Very exciting stuff for everybody, especially our Patreon producers. Muhammad Muhammad, Cameron Reagan, Steve Powers, Lee Polero, Julian the Gluten-Free Gamer, Kieran O'Donnell, Drew Garnier, and Al Tribesman. Uh, if you want to be a Patreon producer, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny. You get the show ad free. It's great. It's fun stuff for everybody. If you don't want to do that, that's cool. You could watch live on Twitch, like I was saying, or you could watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny, roosterteeth.com, or just search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny reviews. It's a great time for everybody. How y'all doing? Good, man. You just crushed that intro. Can we get a round of applause for Tim? Thank you. Thank you. I practice. Turns out all I had to do is listen to the YouTube comments. You know That's what I mean? it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I've been I'm gonna do the same thing for too fuck long. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking about Dogma, the fourth film in the Viewisk universe, released on November twelfth, nineteen ninety nine. Moving to a that a new pattern now, where it went from kind of year to year movies. Now it's every two years, which I think, you know, can kind of help. A little bit when you're directing and acting in a movie uh, and writing, I guess. Directed by Kevin Smith, once again, uh, a budget of $10 million and a box office of $44 million. That's uh, success, Andy. That's four times as much, Craig. That's what you want. That's what you Good. want. A runtime of two hours and eight minutes, making this one of the longer um, movies, unless you watch the, lo- the wrong version in- of the extended cut. Um, and yeah, that's all I got for you. What did you guys think about Really? Dogma? That's it? Do you have more facts of the dogma later on? I, mean, I have a bazillion facts. Oh, okay, 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 pepper okay, those okay. in. You want one, Greg? When Kevin yeah. Smith and, and Scott Moser heard that Alan Rickman was a Chasing Amy fan, they asked him to play Rickman. Metatron. He read the script and came back with two questions. Would they stay faithful to the script and... Were the ring the wings real or CGI? Nice, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah. And then uh, another follow up was uh, Jason Mewes had the entire script memorized before rehearsals. When asked why, he said it was because he didn't want to anger Alan Rickman. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't Kevin either. Smith, yeah. Kevin Smith took him aside before rehearsals began and said he needed to be on his best behavior and bring his A game to the set. Does this remind you guys of Cool, cool Greg? Greg. What? <laughs> cool <laughs> Greg. <laughs> What's oh funny God. is that later um, Alan Rickman. Fl- uh, f- fucked up a line and like asked you know what what was his line and uh what's his face yeah just like lost all respect for him (laughs) (laughs) there was another one too right where like uh kevin had to pull him aside during filming because he was mouthing other people's lines because yeah he memorized the whole script as to not piss off alan rickman it's a great story it's in a million of kevin's different podcasts that is that is 100% 100% what you do when you have Hans Gruber in your movie. Really? You fucking pay respect where respects to Greg, I know yeah. you want to be an actor one day and leave us all behind. I've been trying if, for you. If anyone, well, he's dead now, but if, if they reanimate Jesus Alan Rickman's Christ, corpse Nick. and they put him in a movie with you or it's yeah. CGI, Alan Rickman, you have to memorize sure. not only that script, but if it's a sequel to a movie, you have to memorize the script for all the movies that came before and after. It's tough but fair, and for the reanimated Alan Rickman, I will. <laughs> I, I, I will go on record right now. If Alan Rickman ever comes back from the dead and wants to act in a movie with me, I will memorize that script and the script for it. Can you imagine, it if, if, wait, can you imagine if, for a second? It's a sequel to the Dogma 2. Or to Dogma, Greg's gonna be fucking good because he clearly has already memorized the scripts to all of these movies as he's proven <laughs> the last three weeks. Yeah, that's so good. Pretty intense. Can you imagine Al- for a second, like, oh hey, Alan Rickman just came back from the dead, and the f- only thing he His wants is to request. be in a movie. <laughs> With Greg That'd be Miller. amazing. <laughs> Andy, give me a little Alan Rickman yeah, give it back to from the dead asking Greg to be in a movie. Well, 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 Greg Miller. That's it's, <laughs> been <a> while. <laughs> it's been a while. Well, he's been dead for a while. Really? It's Nape one. Do, I mean, do, he's the dead. Mr. Potter. do the Mr. Potter one. Uh, well, 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 Mr. <laughs> Okay. See, that's yeah, that's more in your yeah. The T's, exactly the T's the are clutch to making it a Snape impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Pop top. Expelliarmus. That's the good one. That's that the one that, 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 that is, that's out. the money. That's the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. We're about dogma, ladies and gentlemen. Who wants to give their thoughts about this movie? I, I, this movie is always interesting for me because I always remember 
liking it and then about halfway through i get fatigued watching it mm. and i think it's on the, on the last time watching it I'm, i was like i think i've pinpointed why it's because every scene by nature of it being such a complex like uh, all these all the references to catholicism and the catholic church every scene has so much exposition in it sure. that at a certain point i feel like i'm in church i feel like i'm back in catholic school and we're sure. in like we're in like Bible study class, and I'm like, wait, okay, who is that? And was Loki an angel, or was he a yeah. Norse god? I can't remember what's going <laughs> Nick, on. Yeah. yeah, you're you're learning about uh, like, for example, like put yourself in my shoes. I'm hearing all these like fucking all these names and stuff, and all I'm thinking about, Greg, is like, who who is fucking Diamond Dallas Page fighting tonight? You know what I mean? Because it was always Monday night, and it's like yeah. raw nitro, or in a couple hours, and I just, that's all I can think about. I don't care about this stuff, man. Yeah, it's tough. I, I mean, I think the movie. Wait, really so is that good. how you felt watching it this time, or in 1999? Oh, well, great movie. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, don't get me wrong. I, I still. I no, still I'm, I'm asking Andy, not you, Nick. I, okay. I was wondering okay. where the DDP thing came into play. I apologize. Play. I'm uh, saying he's no. distracted. And uh, this movie's about, boring uh, him to think about other stuff he actually wants to do. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Exactly. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. I, uh, That's a, a fascinating take. Yeah, because you figure for me, this is like. I mean, one of the reasons I probably like Kevin Smith movies so much in terms of, uh, you know, growing up was that I, f I found so many common themes in them. But being a Catholic school kid, right, 1999, we said this came out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, well, that's I am I graduate uh, high school in 2001, right? So I'm in the middle of it, man, where I've been going to uh, Catholic school since kindergarten at this point, <laughs> And I will go to a Catholic high school as well, right? So. For me, this is like the movie I've been preparing for all my life with all this stuff that I was like, why am I learning this? Why am I in religion class? Why am I going to church so much? Here we are. It's all paying off and it's all, you know, reflecting back on Kevin and wrestling with a lot of things that, you know, uh, you know, uh, wrestling with Catholicism in general in a lot of ways. And I don't think in an insulting way, in a very uh, realistic way. Right. I think Bethany's struggle is reflected in a lot of people I know who grew up Catholic. Kev? Um, I've always really, really enjoyed the movie. I actually enjoyed it quite a bit yesterday, too. Um, it's funny because uh, you know, I've grown up Catholic as well. I uh, I grew up with, like, a big old, one of those uh, children's, like, Bible yeah, books. Big with, <laughs> with uh, <laughs> like, he stories. Let, he let it hang too long. All Sorry. our minds wandered. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, On my face the entire time. So, like, I, I grew up very aware of, like, Bible stories and stuff like that. And as, as I became older and Wikipedia became a thing, there were sure. so many things that this uh, movie, like, makes fun of that, like, I had look, looked into before. So it's one of those things where it's like, you're listening and hearing key words and phrases and everything taken to, like, you know, 100% and exaggerated. And really, it, it's interesting to see something that was such a unique small like thing where i've spent night google searching random terms and stuff or like yeah, order of Zion. angels and stuff yet yeah, scions and uh and then to see it come out in a comedy i just thought that was yeah. just like such a unique and fun thing for me um also i have to run i'll be right back i have headphones on i can hear you guys still great i just need to handle something downstairs do your thing uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I thought that the premise of this movie was extremely fascinating, uh, but I think that it in in line with many of the Kevin Smith movies, I think that it feels overly long. There is a lot of exposition. I think this is the least funny of the movies so far. Uh, what I liked about it is that it had kind of the entire cast together for the most part, and that mm -hmm. kind of like I like seeing these actors, especially now that we've seen them so many times, kind of vibe off of each other. So that stuff was fun, but taking the Kevin Smith and uh, like the Jay and Silent Bob characters and like putting them through this like otherworldly experience kind of just feels super weird and making them actual profits. Like it, it, I found it hard to take the movie as seriously as it was trying to present the information. And, yeah. uh, and, and that's the thing is like, I, I was following everything that they were saying and there was some interesting ideas. It's just, I don't know why this movie needed five action scenes that were horrible and way too long and didn't look cool at all. And it was distracting. It kind of reminded me of the things I liked least about mall rats. Mall rats, yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's that's kind of the, the weird thing for me is I feel like this movie is at odds with itself of trying to do something that is way more complex than the other movies, but then still following into all falling into all of the pit holes that the other ones did. This movie hit hit for me a lot uh comedically compared to a movie like Mall Rats or even Clerks. Uh, where I feel like every time they tried to make me laugh, they did. Um, and I agree with all of y'all about how much exposition there is, but 
I'm still interested in what it has to say. So mm-hmm. like, I'm still listening. And I think that it's still, it, I, I was never bored with this movie, I think, which is super important for me where every, whether a scene is rambling on and telling you like this, the, you know, the backstory of Catholicism, like I still enjoyed it. And I thought it was really cool. It's the backstory of Catholicism. Yeah. The it's lore. Just, no, yes. like I'm with you. And I mean, obviously I like Kevin Smith movies for the exposition, for the talking. I thought this one did a good job of, it talks a lot and gives you a lot. And I totally understand being overwhelmed or having feeling, feeling it gets gr- going on too long. For, again, I like that. And I like the character interaction, but I thought it did a, a better job than most of we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, wait, something's happening. And then we would sl- go into a different situation that would be, or a different scene, or we would move around in a way that kept me engaged with the multiple planes of action in action in terms of what the characters are doing more than the fight scenes. I'm with you, Tim, right? Of like, the train fight scene you're like uh, what is going on like <laughs> why wait do the angels have no superpowers why are they being overpowered and pushed around and like what's happening and why can silent bob just throw bartleby off the train like yeah sure you know what i mean all that kind of stuff but in terms of what was happening the story i think you know granted i've seen the movie probably dozens of times at this point but the way i still enjoy the way the story starts in different different points and then when it intersects and then how they react and respond to that you know i do like the turning point for uh bartleby ben affleck in the movie right where he is just trying to go home he is just trying to do the normal thing right but then you know when rufus in the train scene after the train scene he has a turning point right where no he doesn't give a shit what is going to happen he's moving on in this direction you kind of see him and uh loki flop positions a little bit in terms of power i think there was one jarring thing that i noticed with um linda Fiorentino. Florentini, Fiorentini. Fiorentino? We're just gonna call her Bethany the rest of the movie. <laughs> so, Beth, so Bethany, uh, I, I was so it, it was really distracting for me whenever she was on screen because I, f- I never felt like she was acting opposite aside uh, opposite from anybody. It always felt like her lines were completely separate mm. and as if like they just had her film all of her lines one weekend, but not across, not uh, opposite anybody in the screen. It just always felt like every line yeah. of hers. She wasn't was, reactionary. It wasn't like she was very know, when she's talking. Yeah, she's talking to Alan Rickman, and like none of her lines seemed like they made sense to what Alan Rickman was saying. It was yeah, more she was a performance a, thing. She was a really interesting choice in this because I feel like everyone else was a caricature of what they were playing. I feel like everyone kind of took it up to one hundred and ten percent. Or like even Alan Rickman comes in, right? He's got that fun, mm-hmm. spunky Alan Rickman, like I was on fire and you're dousing me the and I got these wings. And it's super fun, right? And I feel like Ben Affleck and uh, uh, Matt Damon are doing their best, like s- crazy <laughs> Goodwill Hunting vibe together, where they're over the top. But you're, but everyone seems like they're having fun. Chris Linda Rock is cartoon, you know. Yeah. Chris yeah. Rock is, comes out completely naked, and it's it's and he gets where everyone seems to get what this the vibe of what this movie is going for, with the exception of uh, Linda Fiorentino, who just kind of seems very subdued. And I don't think that's her fault. That's just who she is as an actor. Uh, prior prior to this, she played a lot of like femme fatales and a lot of like sultry neo-noir movies. And they brought her in for this. It was very interesting. And I know that but, they had a little bit of a back and forth as far as like Kevin Smith has been kind of vocal about not liking working with her. Um, but it's funny yeah, that they have I, Janine I Garofalo. Got here is uh, according to Kevin Smith on his DVD commentary, uh, Linda was very difficult to work with. Some days she couldn't, she wouldn't even speak to him. Smith said that in re- retrospect, he wishes he'd offer the role to Janine Garofalo, but originally it was supposed to be Alanis Morissette, but because of her world tour, she wasn't able to play this, so she ended up playing God. Uh, I think she would have done that... a good job, and I think Janine Garofalo would have done a good job too, because Janine has more of a comedic think, chop. Uh, Janine... We talked about this in the kind of funny podcast, right? Of like, if you could recast somebody in a movie or whatever. And I use this as an example because I just, I'm not creative and I knew this story. But I think even in the scene where at the abortion clinic where Janine's talking to Bethany, right? Like, I feel like they're just, she's so much more on it. And I, you know, we talk about that's how uh, Linda has portrayed characters before or whatever. And so that's how she brought to Bethany. I think it also is like, you see it that I, I, I would say and argue that like, Bethany, for the most part, is a one note character, right? Is this one note? And there's spikes to it here and there. You know what I mean? Like her freaking out in the water, right? Her finally getting to meet God or whatever. But like for the most part, even with the, you know, talking to Alan Rickman in both her house and then in the the restaurant, right? It is very much like she's like kind of playing the whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Kind of like yeah, that. She doesn't have a lot of range. Right? In this, she's yeah. like, yeah, okay, whatever. She just always seems happen. like she's but, on some sort of downer drug. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. isn't that, isn't that the character? I think like That's she's deeply yeah. depressed. Like that's, 
that's part of who she like is supposed yeah, to be. Yeah. No, I, I get that, sense, but, yeah. but at the same time, so she's... am I, Kevin. But look at me. Yeah, exactly. Look at no, how you're not. <laughs> no, you look how happy you are. No, I'm not You'll saying she did a bad well. job, but like I think I think Linda, I think she was just miscast. I think she was really, really, really good in. I remember the first time I really, really remember her in a role was Men in Black, and yeah, I think she Black. played that character perfectly because it was a little bit weird, and she was supposed to be a little strange and a little bit like you know, kind of sexy and sultry, but also really weird and off the wall. And I think she played very, very well against the main character who was Will Smith's character, like coming in with that fun Will Smith energy. In this, it just feels like everyone's having a great time and she's not. And I get that the character is supposed to be like this, this kind of tragic figure that, that gets redemption at the end. But I feel like it, it, at most of the scenes she's in tend to drag. And it also doesn't help that she gets a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the dialogue of like, you know, the movie is about the loss of faith and it's about the Catholic Church and like mm -hmm. and, and, and in a lot of ways how the Catholic Church has, uh, you know, is a little hypocritical, uh, hypocritical um, and how a lot of their things don't make sense. The, the whole MacGuffin of this movie is that, you know, God can't be, uh, you know, the, the idea of dogma is that whatever man puts into or, or the church puts into rule, God has to adhere to, which is in and of itself is a, is a hypocritical statement, right? Like God, you can't set rule for God. God sets rule for humans if you're going to believe, if you have that level of faith. So the, the movie asks a lot of these interesting questions, but it does such a great job of being playful when like Selma Hayek's there or like Jason Lee is there or any of the other characters who are like having this hilarious back and forth, even though clearly they don't know each other as actors and they didn't spend any time with each other. They're supposed to be old friends. It still kind of comes through. And then Fiorentino gets there and you're like, you're bringing a level of like, you're trying to win an Oscar to this. That's just, this movie is not, <laughs> like just should not be trying to hit. Yeah, that's so dead on. That's so dead yeah. on. <laughs> Let's get to the plot. Plot, plot, shit, plot, monster. No. All right, so uh, here we go. We start, of course. Uh, the movie begins with a disclaimer, of course, telling you that this is a meant to be for funsies. Calm down, everybody. Don't hurt anybody, because of course, leading into dogma. If you didn't know, if and this is just the, clearly the '90s. Nobody cares this much about religion now. But back in the day, if you even said you were going to talk about Jesus in cinema and make a comedy about it, people flip the fuck out, and there was people re protesting, and there's people threatening to do all sorts of stupid violence and shit at the movie theaters. So they put this disclaimer up of like. You're going to watch this movie 10 minutes in. You're going to see it's a comedy, not to mention it's a comedy that is pro God. Like where I, you know, I was raised Catholic, all this stuff puts in there, makes a joke about a platypus uh, that pr platypus proves that God has a sense of humor. Then they immediately double down on their joke of having to apologize for thing and apologize to people who care about the platypus. They didn't mean to offend people who are about the platypus, the noble platypi. <laughs> yeah. And I like, how it's like, it's like we, if anybody who offended the noble platypi, we clearly didn't mean to offend anyone who loves this stupid creature. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking give it that stupid ass platypus by the time they get out of it so uh, from there we are in asbury park new jersey on the boardwalk where jen and i went not even because it was a kevin smith reference just because we went there during that uh, wedding we went and walked the boardwalk uh when you could still go outside uh and we find a man there uh he's an ugly little spud but he's outside the ski ball thing and he's got hands man he fucking loves these things he he's has hands. Him and him they're so stuff. cool He's there to play ski ball for some reason at 530 in the morning because the sun's rising. But never mind that. He's there basking in the sunlight, having a great time, staring at his stupid little ugly man hands. And then wouldn't you know it, three kids show up on rollerblades with hockey sticks and they look creepy. But we don't know why. One's in a hell, hell, hell boy shirt. Shout out to that. Uh, they run over, check him into the boards there. He goes down. They start hacking at him with hockey sticks. You're not 100% sure what's going on and you don't need to be. Uh, from there, we jump back. We're still in New Jersey. We jump to uh, Cardinal Glick, the one and only George Carlin, who is introducing Catholicism Wow, a new campaign so from good. the church. <laughs> and, and by the way, you want to talk about perfect Christ. casting for this. Yeah, Perfect yeah. casting is George Carlin for this. A man who has been like, who, who just is known for like criticizing things like the Catholic Church yeah. his entire career and putting him in a, as a cardinal. And the Buddy Christ so is arguably the funniest thing Kevin Smith's ever written. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, the idea here, of course, is that Catholicism, wow, is here to turn around uh, Catholicism, get it, you know, bring it to the new generation, the new kids, show people that, uh, you know, this is something to celebrate and have fun with. Cardinal, look, obviously not your normal kind of cardinal as George Carlin is fucking killing it. Um, but uh, the main introduction here is this is going to be a series of different changes uh, throughout the Catholic Church over the next year. But the first thing they're introducing is Buddy Christ. Uh, you know, for years, Jesus on the crucifix their lord and savior has been the symbol of the church and it's a downer <laughs> him dead on the cross <laughs> right downer. and he, i love how he's like jesus wasn't meant, meant here to, jesus wasn't sent here to give you the willies 
He was a booster. He was a he was a pal. He was a booster, and that's why I introduced Buddy Christ, this awesome sh- thing of Jesus. Uh, you know, sm- a big old fucking grin pointing at you, saying, "Yeah, dog, you do it." It's Buddy funny. Christ. I've, I've uh, I, yeah, I've never I've seen that image so much over the internet, and I just never yeah. knew it was from this movie. It's really cool. Yeah, 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 it's a great one. It's a great one, and a lovely Jesus I would like to hang out with. Uh, <laughs> Buddy Christ, of course. Yeah, their first initiative here uh, in the thing, and it'll be many of the other things, uh, including uh, what we'll get to here in a second of their rededication. Of of this here church um i don't think we get our first uh, one from uh, what is it? this is grant hicks right i don't think this is grant giving us his report yet anyway for you know the third triplin hicks family of dante gill and whatever <laughs> but they'll eventually explain of course the whole thing of walking through the archway blah 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 um so from there, we jump from New Jersey over to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where we are at an airport. Now, kids, you might say, why are all these people flying places? Back in the day, before 9-11, you could just walk up to – you could walk into an airport. You got time to kill? Drive on over to the airport. Walk into the gate. Sit right there for no reason. Like our friend. dollars for a Coke. Wait. Yeah. Our, do it. That, that's true. You could just go in. Like, I, I legitimately – Oh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. I never traveled before 9-11. Yeah, before yeah, 9/11, so, there's all those movies where people were meeting each other at the gate. Like oh, someone will come out of oh, the gate yeah, of the plane, yeah, and your yeah. family will be there. It's because you didn't used to have to go through security when it was wow. like you could, and, or actually you could. You still had to go through security, but you didn't have to have a ticket to get through. Oh security, gosh, right, right. That's wild. The days, crazy? the days. Because Lord knows, I've made the mistake, guys. You know me, I'm a terrible flyer. But I've made the mistake of like I have a layover, and I just like accidentally exit. Like fuck, I have to re-enter. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, damn, <Andy>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so Bartleby and Loki are killing their Saturday hanging out at the Milwaukee airport. Um, Bartleby, Ben Affleck, and hey, shout out to Ben Affleck's teeth. Brand yeah, new yeah, teeth. Yeah, right. Right. Hey, of course. Does, does everybody know the story right. behind those? Anybody know the story behind no, those? No. Baby teeth, give it to us. He, he did have baby. Yeah, well, I mean, he had he had fine teeth. You saw him in Chasing Amy last time around, but you might have noticed they look different. Uh, of course, the... I, from what I understand, the one and only asshole in uh, the movie industry, Michael Bay, cast him in Armageddon and was like, cool, your teeth suck. You have baby teeth. You need to have uh, hero teeth for this movie because I'm going to do a lot of chin shots and all this stuff. And Ben Affleck, <laughs> like, uh, all right. And so they gave him new teeth. To be fair, it's one of the biggest glow ups I think I've ever seen. Oh, sure. He looks great. Yeah, he looks great. Uh, like, but it's also the hair it. and the no goatee, Tim. Like, yeah, no no goatee. Goatee. Yeah, yeah, it's going to cause a big difference. Some weight too. Yeah. <laughs> This is this is when you look at him and like you could be a great Batman. You could make Batman. All you need is this. Still a few years away. Still oh few years away yeah, away, look at that. I googled baby teeth, Ben Affleck. Yeah. There's certainly a difference. <laughs> uh, and again, they're not baby teeth. There's you know. Te- well, I mean, different. we can call them baby teeth though. A little bit of gaps. And stuff I mean, he's like a that. fucking yeah. mega millionaire star. He's got the perfect life. Nothing's ever gone wrong for him. So yeah, you can totally shit on his teeth. Go exactly. Ahead and there you go. Like you sound why? like you're underwater. Yeah. Oh really? Do I still? Now you sound better. Uh, what's up with this Loki stuff? Like, why is his name Loki? I don't know. I don't know. I think know it was why. just fun. I think they were just like, like looking, what's. Because back then, nobody at, knew who uh, Loki was. Looking at the trivia a little bit, um, Az- Azriel is the other character. And Azriel is the character that he should have been, right? Because Loki, yeah. like, Azriel is supposed to be like this trickster. And Loki, it's very weird. Loki, not in the Catholic religion at all. I just want to clarify that, right? Like, that's not. He's in North mythology character who is the same character that you see in like the MCU. That is Loki, which is ironic because Ben and Matt Damon actually ended up playing him in the play in Ragnarok, which is fucking hilarious. Yeah. But it was very weird that like that was one of the things that threw me off this time around, knowing just a little bit more than I did when I went to Catholic school. I was like, I don't I, remember I, Loki being a character. I the assume they were yeah. yeah, so he should have been Azriel and Jason Lee's character should have been a Loki like character because he was the one that was cranking stuff in the background. I don't know why Kevin Smith decided to make those characters different. Other I, than I, Loki just sounds cool. Yeah, I, I don't know a reason, and I don't think you do either, Kevin, right? But no. I, 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 the only way, with my interpretation on it always, as somebody who knew little bits about this, not obviously enough about Loki or anything, but I knew about Asriel, obviously, was just the idea that the whole point of the movie was that religion didn't nail it. And so I right. thought that, you know, names getting changed up, you know, uh, pronouns for God being mixed up, like that, that kind of stuff would happen. I thought it was interesting. They never addressed it. You know what I mean? Like why wouldn't that? They also have the muse character, right? Which I don't believe is traditionally Catholic. That's more yeah. like, a again, I, and again, they do right. say point blank in this movie, right? None of the organized religions. Yeah, you have didn't get it. It. No, no one yeah. nailed it. Yeah. Oh, I guess that makes sense. sense. 
what you or it's, it's not about what you believe it's about believing in something uh, anyways uh we're at the air milwaukee airport like, like i said uh ben affleck of course has no anus so you see him chewing popcorn and spitting it back into a different receptacle of popcorn uh but you don't know that yet uh meanwhile on top of that uh loki uh, matt damon is walking around with a sister uh, a nun of some kind who was there collecting money because again kids back in the day <laughs> you'd have people panhandling in the airport all over the place trying to get you to donate to all sorts of different things with their little tin cans and basically, he's talking about how through the looking glass is an indictment of organized religion, which he in like w- basically two sentences turns around this turns this nun's life upside down. Right. Of how, the, you know, the the uh, walrus with his tusk is meant to re- represent Eastern religions. Uh, the carpenter clearly meant to be Western and, and, you know, be a reference to Jesus Christ. They trick these oysters. I've never read through the looking glass, trick a bunch of oysters into following when they proceed to shuck and devour them. It's an indictment of organized religion. Uh she 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 has this come to Jesus moment where she's like, you're right. What have I been doing with my life? And he's like, oh, here, take this. T- t- I suggest you take that money, you know, uh, get out of here, buy yourself something nice and find some man, some woman, any somebody to love, because that's really what this is. Uh, and this is all about. She thanks him. She leaves. Uh, Loki sits next down to Bar- sit next to Bartleby. And Bartleby's like, what I don't get about you is, you know, there's a God. You've had conversations. You've been in the room with him. And you- but you still go out and do this. And he's like, I just love f- fucking with the clergy. What can I say, man? Then he goes, and why, you know, why are we down here wasting uh, my, what I don't understand about you is why you want to come down here every Saturday and watch all these people around here when I should be watching my fucking cartoons. Uh, Bartleby, of course, is a watcher. Uh, we, as you'll find out, Loki, the angel of death. So Bartleby just enjoys watching things. So what he's doing here is watching pure human existence as couples are reunited people are reunited uh during uh you know or right coming off of an airplane right for that one perfect moment of being happy to see each other forgetting all their bullshit as he watches a couple reunited and it turns out of course she cheated on him multiple times while she was gone um then uh Bartleby drops the big one on uh, uh loki that the real reason they're here or whatever is that they're going to start their journey they're going home uh, he passes him an envelope, but he doesn't take immediately. And he says, take the envelope. Stop looking at me. People are going to think I broke up with you. Opening up the envelope, they find a piece of paper or a newspaper clipping in there. I think this is when we jump to Grant Hicks, of course, uh, Brian O'Halloran, Dante uh, Gill, uh, who explains, of course, that for the centennial of this church, they've made a rededication. Um, if you walk through this archway, all your sins are forgiven. It's an indulgence, of course. If you went to Catholic school like I did, you're quite familiar with them. Uh, it's one of the indulgences, so you'll be have a clean slate or whatever. Um, this kicks back to them who are trying to figure this all out, piece together how this is a plan or whatever. And the idea, of course, is that these two angels have been banished uh, to Milwaukee by God for purposes we'll eventually get into, right? Um and if they walk back through there, uh, have their sins forgiven, or if they take off their wings, they'll be human. If they walk through the arch, they'll be forgiven. If they're killed, they can finally go back to heaven. They won't be angels, but they'll be allowed back into the kingdom of heaven or whatever. Uh, Matt Damon argues with it again. He brings up the whatever, I forget what it's called actually, The he, but he drops the whole thing of like, the laws you hold here on earth, I'll, I'll abide by in heaven again, to Nick's point of putting god into a quite the corner <laughs> yeah I'm like wait you're all fucking idiots why would i listen to you yeah. but that's what god says of course while they're doing all this this is happening on the their little moving walkway in the background you see the sister drunk off her ass she keeps running out of the bar trying to take the cup salute god and all this stuff and they keep stopping her but she keeps dancing around back there also matt damon uh loki has the very um important point of Wait, who sent the clipping? And Bartleby's like, it doesn't matter who sent the clipping. This is a way for us to go back home. And then everything I just said happens. And then I, one of my favorite lines in the movie, uh, where he compliments his anal retentiveness, and you can't, you can't have, you can't be anal retentive if you don't have an anus. <laughs> and they're I on really, their way. I was really impressed that they finished that line right as the little walkway ended. Oh, wow. That's acting, right there, These right? are professionals, this, guys. This is them hot off of Goodwill Hunting. They know what yeah. they're doing, buddy. Andy, <laughs> we're going to need you to get new teeth for the next podcast, please. Oh, <laughs> shit, man. These cost a lot. These are good chompers, though. I mean, in the front. You know, you're missing that chomper. Let me see chompers. Let me see them chompers. Yeah, those are good. Good-looking teeth, yeah. Bigger. Um, from here, uh, we jump to McHenry, Illinois, or, uh, that's right. Illinois, everybody, uh, where Bethany is in church. Uh, this opens with one of those things that, uh, you might blow past in your first thing, but it is, uh, talking about John Doe Jersey, uh, a man who was accosted outside on the Asbury park, uh, boardwalk. They're raising money here because of course, uh, people want to take him off of life support. So Catholics around the country are raising money to pay for his bills to keep him on life support. Right. 
uh it's a you know it's a scene in this church man nobody's fucking believing nobody's having a good time most people there's a guy just listening to music people are asleep bethany is there though uh she eventually stands and does the whole uh, you know one of the, the catholic chants or whatever um from there she had and he does the, the it's another one where the I, i've never been i think this is a joke but i apologize if this happens in your congregation where the priest is now now for the second collection plate that they're they're double dipping for money in this church <laughs> 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 that always happened in my church. Like there would be one for the church, what, and there would be another one for a second event. Like it would be usually like, oh, this person's in. In so uh, this makes sense. Yeah, I thought it was. I couldn't tell if it was a joke, but I liked it, especially for such a struggling congregation uh from there we're off to an abortion clinic where outside there's a whole bunch of protesters uh bethany climbs outside of her car and they all start screaming at her including uh brian johnson and steve uh steve dave himself and walt flanagan uh you fucking baby killer and then the totally stupid line of like is that the pope and she uh, Jean, Janine garofalo i'm sorry coming in is that the pope and they all look it's like oh she got us she got us <laughs> so the pope was over there uh, they go inside. It's a coffee break or whatever. This is the scene we were talking about earlier with uh, Janine Garofalo and Bethany sitting there uh, enjoying their coffee and talking to one another. And yeah, you know, uh, th- this is again, is like, you know, this whole thing about how Janine Garofalo is Jewish or whatever. And like, you know, can't you go outside and talk to them? They're your people. Now they'd be more mad at me than you. You don't know any better. You're Jewish. Can't use that. We already used that excuse when we killed Christ, <laughs> which is a very, we talk about in all these movies, the, uh, Man, it sometimes sounds like you know you know Kevin Smith's writing it. Like this entire conversation, I'm like, it should have just been Kevin Smith talking to Kevin Smith because it's like yeah. I, I I enjoy the lines, but it's just like this is so Kevin yeah. Smith. It just bleeds uh, through, yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, we're just binging Kevin Smith content, so I'm sure that's not helpful. But the conversation goes on, and yeah, you know, how would they feel if they knew your you know their weekly tiding in church came from uh, an abortion clinic? Yada yada yada. Uh, we get into the thing that you know Bethany is uh, like lost her faith kind of thing right where she used to go to church and feel inspired now she goes and feels nothing at all uh janine uh brings up this point that i would later on stick with me it's a time warp for you because it's the past now but i love that i heard this as a kid growing up and liked it so much i implanted it in my brain as something i actually learned in school and then on a podcast (laughs) with all of you actually brought it up once of like well it's like they taught me in school right of like when you're a kid the cup's small so faith's easy to fill when you get bigger it's and somebody had to like go in the comments be like that's from dogma dogma (laughs) one in the same in a many way many way one in the same probably learned more from dogma in a lot of ways um they have that conversation though right and then uh yeah <laughs> we've been introduced to bethany who is bummed out catholic uh from there we jump to a random house uh, where a woman opens the door and a dude in a white hat looks up and it's jason lee asriel uh he asks With the he's, scary ass sound effect that proceeds <laughs> yeah, he's got a bunch yeah. of sound effects and <laughs> driving home he's bad he's a demon look out dude, real <laughs> talk though if uh Ben had the greatest glow up. I swear Jason Lee had the greatest acting glow up I've ever seen. He is uh-huh. so much better in this movie than the previous movies where I was yeah. just like, oh my God, you're a real actor. You're not just one of Kevin Smith's friends. This is but insane. I, but I, I also think, think it's because I, he's not in the entire movie. I, I also think <laughs> like a lot of that is just lent is, is the character he was portraying and in the way that he was portraying it, where it very much, it felt like a Jim Carrey kind of comedic role, you know, where, Every every line read is a cartoon, and I'm yeah. gonna talk like this and like and shoot it TV, worked, right? It yeah, worked. Great, totally, yeah. it worked for me very, very much. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, anyways, he's he's there. You know, he's lies about being an inspector. Uh. You know, he's investigating Freon leaks. Do you have air conditioning in every room of the house except the bathroom? Well, you know what that means. And he from behind the hockey stick kid kills her pulls the body in jason lee's like get out of the way he comes in there and immediately turns on the ac and st- oh his horns come up he immediately stands in front of the ac and the, well I, I can't quote it directly it's been too long but you know n- there is no sin greater than central air <laughs> yeah, stupid so blue thing for anyone that right. grew up in the in the desert like me that is so true i was like this guy fucking gets it this guy gets it he does get it Azrael gets it you know what i mean uh from there we jump back to bethany's house uh she is asleep uh, she's stirs awake by there's some sound of like something clanking around and then poof, giant thing of fire and it's the Metatron behold the Metatron behold the Metatron the one true voice of God uh, of course it's the 90s man she's not just going to sit there and listen to some flaming bush in her freaking house <laughs> she gets up and gets the fire extinguisher blows him out uh, of course we are that it's then revealed that it is in fact Alan Rickman standing there uh, Bethany grabs a baseball bat and is screaming at him to you know get out of the house do this 
It was so hard for me to understand a lot of his dialogue and a lot of other lines because I didn't have subtitles because I was on YouTube. Uh, (laughs) And so it it, like there are a lot of lines that kind of sounded warbly and digitized because YouTube is just YouTube or whatever. Yeah, the DVD, man. You would have been all set. You know what Uh I'm saying? Damn, nah. Sorry, man. Yeah, never got rid of my Kevin Smiths and it's all paying off right now. (laughs) Uh, And so, yeah, uh, what are you going to hit me with? fish and turns the bat into a fish he's like Whoa. so she sits down uh he starts going into the plot here right all right listen here's what's up i'm the voice of god you need to listen to me we got a quest for you you got to do this stuff for us she's confused by all of this and not really believing it um he's laying out the plot you know leaving very specific things out right and finally she wants more proof so he snaps his fingers and they're in a mexican restaurant uh, where where are we you know <laughs> the only place you can go for good tequila we're in mexico actually the mexican eatery down the street from your house but it's still pretty it's still pretty impressive still quite yeah. impressive. <laughs> uh, and that's just more again uh two tequilas por favor and one uh empty glass uh he's spitting the tequila back into it. And here's where we get into even more of the plot, right? That basically she needs to go on a quest for this. Just go to a church and stop some angels from entering. Uh, these angels in fact are, uh, a watcher. And then who, and the man who was the angel of death, right? Um, oh, there was a great line earlier too, right? Of where, uh, when she had no idea who Metatron was, he's like, oh man, put it in a movie. Everybody's a theology, uh, uh, I love whatever, right? and then, so then it pays <laughs> off here, right? When she's, he, he, she explains more of it of like, you know, Bartleby or the, Bartleby was watching, uh, you know, Asriel work, uh, I uh, know Bartleby was watching Loki work at uh, well Sodom and Gomorrah that was him uh, the Noah that was him uh, he was watching him work uh, when he was killing all the firstborn of Egypt and she's like oh the plagues <laughs> and he's like put in a Charlton Heston oh if it's in a Charlton Heston movie it's a big deal it's important uh, and how that uh, after they completed their uh, uh, killing uh, they fucked off to a bar got wasted and got into a conversation of if killing in the name of God is okay. Um, basically though, Bartleby convinced Loki to say, no, it is not who tossed on his sword. God banished them, uh, to, to the, <laughs> banish them not to hell, but to a worse place, Milwaukee, uh, for the rest of human existence. Um, uh, yeah. And so, and on top of that, he, they ruined it for everybody else. So now angels can't, they can't drink they can't imbibe in alcohol, hence the spitting. So the idea here is that, yes, you need to go to this church, which has fucked it all up with this indulgence, this thing, stop a couple of angels from entering and thus negating all of existence. Uh, of course, if the, the pl- plot here is if they were to go into the church and reverse the word of God, the word of God would no longer matter and the universe would be in free fall. Black would become white. Existence would become nothingness. Basically, the rules would be out the window and we'd all be damned and destroyed. So it is imperative that these people do not get back into heaven or back into that church, more importantly, because then you can't do nothing unless wait for him to sin again, I guess. Um, Bethany's still not about it. He's like, listen, you know, there's going to be some prophets that will come along the way. They'll identify themselves as such. One will talk at length the others are quiet more of the quiet type um she's still not totally gung-ho on the idea but he's like listen you got to do it kind of thing it's going to happen whatever blah, blah blah so he snaps again she's back and she wakes up at the alarm thinking it's all a dream reaches under her pillow finds the two maracas uh that were there beforehand um from there i think we've in this is where we insert i believe a really quick scene of uh because well, when they were on the walkway um loki had said something like oh while we're doing this journey or whatever i can kill some people too i'll get back in the good graces you know what i mean and so now we jump to the gun store i believe to fill in a little, just a little bit of time here but even yeah. if not i'm gonna put it in, i'm gonna pepper it in here and of course it is um oh man J- uh, jeff right uh randall why yeah I mean, like, randall well, what, randall's name is jeff anderson right yeah i fuck that up no that's right uh, Okay, he's there working as the clerk in the gun shop sell, as uh, Loki and uh, Bartleby look at weapons, <laughs> mainly Loki. And uh, he, Loki is in, Bartleby has a great conversation of like, how are you even ensure what incurs God's wrath anymore, right? I remember when eating meat was a hell worthy, on a Friday was a hell worthy trespass. It's like the big <laughs> ones never change. And they, they keep going back and then they argue about uh, actually who does the most work kind of thing. Where he, he's talking about, is it Sodom and Gomorrah? He's like, you started a couple fires. Uh, yeah. I rain sulfur. There's a world of difference. All right. Mass genocide is the most uh, physically taxing I- I activity one can engage in, except for soccer. Again, like, <laughs> such a great line, but so Kevin Smith, like, so fucking Kevin Smith, but I love it. And yeah, uh, uh, Randall or Gun, gun Store Just Randall. Just looking who freaked out Randall. the whole time. Just looking freaked <laughs> out, right? Uh, 
From there, we jump back to Bethany's story. She is leaving the abortion clinic after a hard day's night. Uh, she walks out to her car and hears something. And, she, What's that? and then she turns around. Well, and it's the hockey stick kids. She's like, oh, no. And she's got like stuff on She got. She drops her keys and they hit it on the other side of the car. And then they do this whole thing where they're like stomping on the ground like they're going to fucking kill her. And she jumps down trying to get her keys. They're still way too far. Just put your head under the car. You know what I mean? At some point, cut your losses and get your fucking pumpkin head under the goddamn Jesus. car. This, this is like Christ. action scene number one that I was talking about where it's just yeah. like it, you can't show this well. Don't show it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, the hockey kids rush and in the nick of time, Jay and Silent Bob enter the frame, jumping down, uh, punching around, doing all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, not great action stuff here, right? Of like punches and stuff. Like, are these, these kids have superpowers? Are they undead? I'm not sure. Uh, but she pulls the hockey jersey over one of them and all this stuff, knocks them out. They fall down. They get up and like, we got to go. And they run away. And uh, Jay and Silent Bob get to celebrate their victory. Right? And again, I think uh, Jay and Silent Bob, I, I mean, I love period, but I love them in this movie. Like for real, or it's just like, yeah, I know they were just kids, but we kicked our pubeless asses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, still celebrating, they just beat the shit out of some like, fucking shitty oh, team kids, right? Or whatever. Uh, Bethany's freaked out at first, but then realizes, okay, these guys aren't here to hurt me. Then they immediately ask if they're, she's going to have sex with them. They're like, why would I have sex with you? Like, well, you just saved your life. We thought that. Plus, you're outside of the abortion clinic. Wait, why are you outside of the abortion clinic? Good oh, place good. to meet uh, loose women, right? Clearly, <laughs> these chicks already enjoy sex. And it's just this, ah, uh, you know what I mean? But good introduction. Gone. Reintroduction. Snooch to the motherfucking booch, dude. Snooch to the motherfucking nooch. Um, there's another, maybe this is where this, see, there's another, I think, little one, or maybe not. Maybe we just, we do just jump to the diner. We're in the diner now, needless to say, though. Uh, continuing the, oh, I'm sorry. I actually did. Do we do it. the drive when, first? No, 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 no. Uh, when Jay and Silent Bob, when she's like, I'm not going to fuck you, like, whatever. Jay and Silent Bob start leaving, like, man. And Jay's like, fuck this place. You know, we I could have stayed in Jersey and uh, made myself a profit. And that's when Metatron's voice triggers in her head of, like, he'll run inside himself as a profit. She's like, oh, fucking really? Then we jump cut to the diner uh, with a great magic moment uh, uh, with Jay and Silent Bob across from Bethany in the thing. Both of them f- fidgeting with their legs. And she's like, what? <laughs> when are we going to get to the sex? Like, we're not, I'm not fucking you. That's not what's <laughs> happening here, right? So, yeah. Did you bring someone for my friend here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I don't want like sloppy seconds. seconds. <laughs> uh, and again, like, and it's, it, I think, honestly, that, like, it's – and it doesn't always work, but when Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith does it better than most, I think of walking that fine line of like how horrifying this, these two scenes could be of Jay thinking he's going to fuck her. And it's not, it's kind of endearing. You know what I mean? Cause he is a good guy and did this thing, but then he was just confused on why it was happening. Even at the end, right. The payoff right. of all this, right. Oh, Cause they, so good. they set it up here, right. Sorry. Well, I was going to say, cause there's a, there's the difference between him doing it on purpose and being smart about it and him just being a dumb shit. And he's just a dumb shit. He's a lovable dumb shit, which I think is that line between creepy and all right, we forgive you because you just you're so you're an idiot. This situation <laughs> is so far beyond your comprehension level yeah. that you're just doing you're just doing whatever you know you default to. And so, yeah, this is where Jay sets up. All right, I'm not going to have sex with you. All right, well, let's just say we're in this scenario where the world is going to end in five minutes, like you know, and there's no way out. Like, would you fuck me then? And she's like, in that highly unlikely situation, sure. And he so. just turns the shit, Bob. Yeah, she's a slut. <laughs> and, and again, Bomb. like I think, you know, talking about how I love how the movie comes together. Like watching that your first time. Like I, I don't know about you guys. And I, Andy and Tim, is this your first time? Yeah. No, I've seen it before. Oh, okay, long, Andy, did you long ago. did you think we were going to build to an apex where the world was going to end? <laughs> like it's such no. a great line to implant, and then just be like, oh, of course, that's just a oh stupid my god. Thing. It also it makes so time. much sense for him to like. It just felt right when he said it. Of like, of yeah. course, he would say something stupid like that because like, how is he gonna try to have sex with her? You know? Yeah. Bong bong. And so uh, Beth, Bethany instead lays out that her signing. Listen, I need you guys to take me to Jersey. Uh, they are not about this at first, uh, including when Jay stands up and she tries to stop him. And he cocks back and goes, I'll scream rape, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is just a joke you can't do anymore. No. Um, uh, but at the time, funny. And then again, from Jay, from Jay, from Jane's on the Bob, I think it works a little bit differently. Uh, but she's like, I'll pay you. They sit back down to actually listen. All I need to go is to go to Jersey. You're going there anyway. Just, you know. Help me out and, and do this, all right? And uh, they're like, okay, cool. Like, whatever. They, they abide by the rules. Uh, but Jay's like, but I, I get to drive. Then we jump cut to Bethany's car. Jay what drives. What gear are you in? Gear? <laughs> what gear are you in? Gear? And then so we, funny. 
we cut to them from the, the, the POV of the engine with them looking into it as it smokes out and her being disgusting and walking away. And Jay just goes, Son, Bob, like I ever drove before. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the time Tim, that I was down in Cabo San Lucas with a 50 cent G unit. And I one that. of his guys borrowed an ATV from the kid next door, not realizing that the ATV actually had gears. And so this kid watched in horror as each person from G unit just took turns riding his first gear into the fucking ground. It was just, like, hey! just red lining. Damn it, Tony Ayo. And finally I was like, can I, can I have a gun? The kid's like, sure. I mean, just this thing's fucked up already. And I just got my motorcycle <laughs> license. So I was like, guys, here's how you change gear with a clutch. And I changed gears. And by that point they were like, we don't give a fuck. We're high. We're going to get uh, <laughs> they they invite you into G unit. And they just, uh, we ate ice cream sundaes with G unit while 50 cent ate steak. <laughs> That's a real You're story. Just, that's a real story. Useless. <laughs> yep. Um, not that it matters. I left off the point of Jane Silent Bob. Uh, went to Illinois because of uh John Hughes movies. They thought they would go there to Shermer, that's Illinois, so where all where all the John Hughes movies take place, like Sixteen Candles and Breakfast Club, and uh, turn a profit and like you know actually do it. And it turns out, of course, there is no Shermer, Illinois. They were just stuck out there after they got there. Doesn't really matter for the story. Um, so again, like I. Now. They're, they're broke down on the side of the road like I ever drove before. And a bus races past them. Uh, we are now into Wait, the really, bus. Really, really quick, I just want to add, like, I love that, like, this adds to their, like, future hatred of Hollywood. Like, where they're, like, oh, yeah, Hollywood's yeah, 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 so yeah. fake. Yeah. Um, from there, we're into the bus. We're at the very back. Uh, Bartleby and Loki are sitting there. Um, and I guess actually this might be the, where the conversation I was talking about happens, where it was like, how do, how can you even be sure of what incurs God's wrath anymore? Oh, you know, it, 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 the seven deadly never changed or whatever. Right. And he's like, I, I can spot the commandment breaker from a mile away. And he's like, what are you doubting me? No, I'm not doubting you. I'm flat out telling you, you don't have what it takes. <laughs> this is from the man who still owes me $10 over what'll be the bigger movie, ET or crush groove. Hey, fuck what you, man. Time to tell on that one. Groove. One of those shitty movies you wouldn't remember that, but like came out, I think, opposite in the ET time frame or whatever. I bet you that joke killed like when this movie came out. <laughs> no, it did not. I do not remember that. It, I, but like, I remember watching that being like, what the fuck is he talking about? I feel like that joke hits right where it's like, what the fuck's Crush Groove? And we know what ET is, right? Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Um, but uh, one row away, there is a man making out with a woman who, of course, is Scott Moser, the man making out. I assume it's his wife, but I don't know. Uh, and uh, he's and he's like, "There's one right there." He's like, "What? They're making out?" Yeah. Did it, it, it ever dawn on you that he's married? Yeah, but no married man kisses his wife that way. <laughs> so that. he inter interrupts. Excuse me, sir. Are you married? Are you married? Or well, yeah. Excuse me, sir. Like, what? Are you married? Yeah. And then you know he they go back to making out. He's a dick about it. The taps him again. He's like, "What?" And he's like, "To her." Not in your fucking business, but no. Uh, Loki looks at Bartleby with a, you know, content, still got it kind Nailed of look it. on his yeah. face. Then pulls out a gun and blows the dude's brains out on the bus. Yeah, we right. get it from the outside where the gunshots go off. The bus swerves to a stop. Everybody gets out and runs in different directions. Whose house? Runs house. Run Stay what? Whose house? Uh, yeah, so uh, Bartleby and Loki are now on foot uh, celebrating the fact that they've ruined their chances of getting there by a motor vehicle, but at least Loki still has it when it counts. Uh, cut back to Jay, Silent Bob, and Bethany. It's daytime now. Uh, they're just going to hoof it, or they actually don't know what they're going to do. They're trying to stop cars, but cars aren't stopping. Um, Bethany's pissed off and like, you know what? Fuck it. This was a stupid idea. This isn't worth it. You guys don't know what you're doing. I'm just going to walk back uh, to home in uh, Illinois here and fuck you guys. Um, Jay freaks out, starts screaming at her and goes, you know, guys like us just don't fall out of the fucking sky, you know? At that same I point, point Rufus, Chris Rock falls out of the sky, lands in front of them. Jay has one beat and looks up and goes, beautiful, big titted na naked ladies don't just fall out of the fucking sky, you know? <laughs> Funniest <laughs> line in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rufus gets up and here we go. It's uh, We have been introduced to Rufus, of course. He is a, a naked black man named Chris Rock. Uh, he is the 13th <laughs> apostle, which he drops on everybody. Uh, this is crazy. I never heard of a 13th apostle. Of course you haven't. Oh, actually, I'm, jump I'm jumping a bit ahead. My apologies. Uh, there's a little bit more of like, shouldn't you be liquefied? This... Uh, well, that only, that only applies to the rules of living. I, I told you he's the undead. Kill it. I'm not undead. I'm dead. I had my time. I'm dead. Has a, what looks to be a joint behind his ear, right? And shows it to him. And I can't read this. Can't read it. Uh, it's a letter from Jesus, right? All the stuff. He, you knew Jesus, yada, yada, yada. I'm combining a whole bunch of stuff here. But basically, he gets Silent Bob's coat. 
Uh, but his, his piece would be rubbing up inside your armor. <clears throat> I had a good giggle. I had a good giggle at the. Uh, it's not a joint. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly, it's like yeah. you thinking that like he, he was busting a little joint is really funny yeah. to me. Uh, wait, wait, so, uh, sorry, a fact that I I missed here that uh, I should have brought up during the the diner time. And Greg, I'm gonna need some help here because like I couldn't find too much evidence to back this up. But is that the same diner diner that Jay and Silent Bob were in in Chasing Amy when they? Like no. right before no, the, when they were with no. Holden, no, okay, because that diner's in New Jersey. But there, uh, someone in the chat work. is saying J- Shabe Raven is saying there's a comic called Chasing Dogma that explains everything that happened from when they leave the diner with Holden to the moment they hear the kids attacking Bethany. Correct. If you That's remember really cool. last week, I told you that was extra credit to read, Kevin, and you clearly failed this class. I don't listen to you. So, so where does that fit into? Because that was the thing that was confusing me. Because I saw some what facts, do- and I was like, "That doesn't add up for what I remember seeing this movie." But so the dogma, Wait, so chasing the dogma. What? Explain the chasing dogma thing. Now that we've seen dogma, it's the cha- It's what drives them to Chicago. It's their story of leaving Jersey to go to Chicago or go to Illinois to do this Shermer Illinois shit. And then, as Kevin says, yeah, it's them coming to the realization that John Hughes films aren't there, and then them eventually running into. The abortion clinic and running into Bethany, or well, you're hearing the kids and it cuts off there. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, anyway, well, so cool Ruf, <laughs> uh, Rufus is there, uh, and so he puts on the coat. Your PCB rubbed inside your armor. I'll do my best to tuck it back, big man. <laughs> and then he's like, "All right, let's start walking." He's like, "Do you know how fucking far we are from anything?" Back in the old days, we walked everywhere. Did you ever see a fat <laughs> apostle? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, uh, from there. Uh, this is when they walk and they go to the movie, uh, Egg and Movie Muffin. They go to uh, movies, you know, their version of both McDonald's and Mickey all rolled into one. But he is a golden cow. Like he is literally a golden calf of movie, right? So they're at the movie fast food restaurant uh, eating their, uh, ba- you know, bacon or ham and movie biscuit or whatever the hell it is, right? Um, egg and Movie Muffin. That's it. Couldn't get that wrong. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Banana nut muffin. <laughs> Banana nut muffin. Uh, outside, this is where there's more explanation of what's going on, right? That yes, I'm the 13th apostle. I've never heard of a 13th apostle. They kept me out of the book because I'm black. Uh, I, you know, he wants to get changes made, all that, but people forgot about it. You know, he drops the bomb that Jesus was black. They're like, Jesus wasn't black. You know, he's like, well, if Jesus was black, why'd they put him in the Bible? He's like, it's hard to have a New Testament without him. So you fudge a few facts. You make him a white boy. <laughs> he's giving you, he, he's giving all this good shit, but you can't take it if he's a black man kind of thing and so uh you know there's more of rufus you know explaining more about this right of like you know he was in his prime he, he never got laid with jesus he was in his prime he could have been up to he could have been up to his ass or whatever up to his eyeballs and fine ass shepherd's daughter uh and let alone fine ass Ma- mary magdalene stuff like that laying out what's going on here or whatever explaining it this might have been yeah when he pulled out the thing and, and shows it to them and they thought it was joint but it's not a joint it's actually in aramaic it's a letter from jesus it's like I'll see you in two years. Basically told me when my basically told me when my number was up, and you know took all the zest out of life, kind of thing. Um, this is all going on. Uh, Rufus is laying out the whole thing of like the Jesus stuff, and then he knew Jesus. Jesus is a good guy. Jay and Silent Bob have some good lines, or Jay has some good lines in here. I forget Kevin or anybody. This is like they start to they go to meet Muse, right? Serendipity. Yeah, no, 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 no. So yeah, that's my thing. That's my thing. That's my thing. All I need right now is I just need the help of what does Rufus say to push Bethany away? He says something and Bethany he, goes off to be he sad. He tells her uh, when she was a certain age, this little kid peed in her hair. And I didn't tell anybody that, right? Yeah. And so in her hand, yeah, he right, didn't either. Right. And, and she, and yeah, what did I say? Then that, that boy died of leukemia and his name was whatever the fuck's name was. Um, he, she, yeah, that scares her off. Then uh, Jay's like, tell me something. You, and, he, and Rufus watched it. You masturbate more than anybody on the planet. Yeah, tell me something that I, not, uh, people don't know. He looks at it, when you're doing it, you're thinking about guys. <laughs> and he walks off. And there's that great reaction from Silent Bob. And Jay's just like, not all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, Rufus goes up and catches up with Bethany. And it, yeah, it's this idea that suddenly, like, you know, she didn't, she had a lack of belief last time. And now she's up to her eyeballs and, uh, uh, Christian mythology. He's like, hey, heads up. He hates it when you call it mythology. Uh, well, why don't we ask the two prophets what we should, what we should call it? They look over. They're gone. Where are those fucking assholes? There's a strip club uh, next to uh, the uh, 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 movie uh, fast food joint. Uh, they head into there. They find Jane Silent Bob uh, bellied up to the bar. Across the bar is a, uh, another group uh, led by, of course, uh, Hooper from the uh, from Chasing Amy in a different role, obviously. But he's there. Uh, Dwight. Oh, I forget his cool. real name. I forget his real name or his full name. Dwight something. Kevin, look it up. 
Okay. Put just I'm also scrolling. the kid's name was Brian Johnson, which is funny, and, and that's his friend too. That's, yeah, that's no, the no, name no, of that's, his friend. No, yeah. Brian Johnson is the name of one of his friends. His real life friend, yeah, from comic book man, right? Um. Anyways, so and we're movie. there, and guess what, everybody? It's Selma Hayek, and she's in her bra and panties, and she's dancing up there. And Enemy Selma Hayek people. is an attractive woman to this day, let alone in 1999. Oh my uh, god. Yeah, she's up one there of those, popping like, one of those like who the fuck is that and i'm like oh my god it's Selma Hayek. <laughs> this yeah, is right. great and uh Good every so us. often she'll look cast a look to the other guys and, and there'll be a ding noise and they'll put up more money or whatever um and so rufus and bethany come in they watch this happen and rufus starts to put it together i can't remember if he says it's a mute she's muse maybe he does say that's a muse whatever it doesn't matter uh the, the, you, we set up that something special is going on here and we also set up in a, a whole bunch of stuff that got deleted that uh, Hooper X, Hooper's people get real mad. The gang gets mad at Jane Sonbaugh, but that doesn't actually happen in the movie. They end up being friends when we come back. But we cut away, and we're at movie HQ, where uh, Bartleby and Loki climb out of a, a car they hitchhiked in or whatever. They're like in the, the uh, 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 truck. And so then we are inside the office, and you know some fucking fat cat, white corporate suit comes into the room and sits down with one of their other fat cat white corporate suits and is like, did you see the overnights? And they're like, no, sir, we didn't. And like, first off, isn't your fucking job? No, sir, Wait, we didn't. Uh, uh, Miller. Like, we, killed, we creamed him. Yeah. Dwight Ewell? Was that? That's Hooper? Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Um, and yeah, we creamed him and they're, they're talking a little bit. About, he starts talking a little bit and he's like, do I smell onions? And he looks over and it's uh, uh, Matt Damon with a, 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 a knife carving an onion, right? And uh, what a <laughs> weird Barbie thing to do. Right? And Loki's like, you may proceed, Mona me. <laughs> Bartleby gets up and is being like, well, first, thing, I'd like to apologize, my friend. He's got a pension for the traumatic. Like, Come on. Fucking, it's, it, I love this scene of them getting back in the swing of being the angel of death and a watcher. And like, but like, they're just not on the same page of how they want to do it. And like, they're clearly rusty and they have this like friendship slash relationship, I guess it's been on forever. Um, uh, so Ben Affleck walks over and is like laying out how big uh, Mubi is, right? That they bought it in 1989 from this school teacher and they've gone on to franchise it into fast food. It's in movies. It's uh, priced to own DV- or, uh, VHS cassettes. It's this. It's an album. It's whatever, blah, blah, blah. He goes around the whole thing. He's like, did I miss anything? And the guy's like, you forgot movie magazine. At no point, everybody's called security yet. You know, this guy's got a fucking knife in your room. These two psychos yeah. are here. <laughs> doesn't matter. Uh, you forgot movie magazine. And I was like, damn it. Fuck. And then, Loki pops up like can't can't believe you forgot movie magazine. Uh, he walks over there and he's talking about uh, like you know. Uh, then he start, this is where Loki starts talking about religion, right? And he's talking about uh, voodoo and how it's a collection. It's a, not really a religion. It's just more of a collection of superstitions. Uh, you know, this is the, the voodoo doll, and if you did stuff to it, and yada yada yada. I forget what transition he makes, but then he brings Bartleby back up to start laying out the crimes of everybody and explain that there's not a decent person among you. And he goes, Bartleby goes down the thing. And I think a, a great scene in this movie where he's just fucking calling out all the horrible fucking things these people have done. I mean, Mr. Richards dis- <laughs> disowned his gay son. Uh, this guy, you they know, drugged get worse and worse. Like, yeah, I, oh, yeah, totally. It's yeah. really going to get going. fucking dark. Yeah. Oh, Andy, yeah, yeah, if you're going to massacre a group of people, you start with the least big offender and you move all the way. You got to build it up. You know what I sure, mean? Sure. Okay. But like, give them reason. Yeah. Make them feel like it's like it's. It's it makes sense for everybody to get killed. Yeah. But then the last one is a nice person. Like they're like, oh, and you're you're fine. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah he overlooked her, but it, it was good for us, right? Because we think sure. it's gonna build up. But sure. yeah, but yeah. Again, yeah. So there's a guy who, like drugged his girlfriend and framed a hole cheating on it, and then she Fuck killed herself. Uh, the bad uh, uh, thing, sex with a Thailand boy. Uh, I'm I'm skipping a couple. The, of the, the last one here. they don't even his tell son. us, right? He's like something about his he's son. Gonna, he's like, he's he gets to the son, woman he's and he's like, fuck. "Hey, yeah, you know, like you you you're actually a pure soul. You lead a good life. Good for you." And then yeah, the guy at the head of the table, like you have so many things I can't even. You're, so many skeletons in your closet that are horrible. I can't even vocalize them. Vocalizes one as he whispers in his ear, and the dude breaks down crying. <laughs> Matt Damon's like, "He's your son, you sick fuck." Uh, at this point, uh, Bartleby leaves the room, leaving it to Loki. Who you know does a little bit more monologue in here about how horrible everybody is, and he's like, uh, you know, he starts to leave, and he's like, oh, I forgot my voodoo doll. And he's like, my voodoo doll. You know, if I believed enough in this, and he smashes it down, and nothing happens, but every freaks out. He's like, I don't believe in voodoo, and leaves the room, and then, and then gives it a beat, and then it comes back. But I do believe in this. And starts shooting everybody. God, he's outside. Or be outside with but the movie magazine. <laughs> I love I love that moment of Bartleby sitting there being like God he's just so upset like I believe in this like ah, it's so yeah. funny and that like talk like says so much about their friendship yeah 
uh then yeah uh, uh he gets to the, the very end that woman right and he's like he offers her a piece of gum you lead a good life and we i skipped the point where he in the middle of his speech loki sneezed and nobody said god bless you and he's like but like he pauses you and I looks sneeze. around <laughs> loki all right but you're getting off the light uh then we jump back to um 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 the strip club now it is uh, Jane and Silent Bob are off with the gang. They've been accepted. Uh, uh, Bethany, Rufus, and the Muse are sitting there, and we have it laid out that, yes, this is a Muse from heaven, uh, serendipity. She's creativity. She's inspiration. Nine of the top ten uh, grossing films of all time are hers. Somebody sold their soul to get the, the license, the rights, or whatever, the profits up on uh, Home Alone, which is a John Hughes film. Another reference there. Um, and the idea here is that after inspiring people for so long, uh, serendipity was like, you know what? I'm going to come down here and make my fortune and write all my own stuff. She came down here in the writer's block. She can inspire everybody, but she can't have any ideas for herself, which seems like a simple enough thing of pulling aside any human being and be like, hey, you seem like an all right person. I'm going to give you thousands of ideas. You're going to be the most prolific writer of all time. We just got to share the money. You got it. Selma Hayek with no vagina. Got it. She, she doesn't she want no the money. She wants the credit, right? Is that the... She said she. I mean, she says she was going. She came down to make her fortune. She didn't say I came down for. You're right. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Everything else. No, you're not. You're very smart, young man. I think you should be like put my name on the stuff. We wrote it together. Also true. That's also that's what Ben Affleck did with Matt Damon, right? I don't exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> joke. Is is this the first time we see that Ben Affleck Matt Damon buddy like relationship that uh, we're gonna see? Good like, hunting already happened before this. Oh, did it? Yeah, if if wow. if you remember from the DVD commentary, or maybe it's just a blog or whatever, one of his many stand-up specials or whatever, uh, I believe, and I'm probably out of context on this one, I believe when they shoot the scene we were talking about on the bus, where he's like, to her, I believe they shot that the morning after they won the Oscars. And I huh. believe, I, that's the part I don't remember. I do remember Kevin Smith saying it was kind of tense on set because like they didn't thank them during the Oscar speech. So there was like this thing of like, oh, like we helped you guys out. We felt like we, you know what I mean? But like they eventually Wait, got over they didn't it. Thank uh, Kevin Smith's crew. Yeah. Well, Kevin Smith, I guess yeah. in general. And like they're long. I don't, it, again, I'm dusting off. Out. For a know, just, Basically, just right. Because I think out, it yeah. was that like, I don't know, that like Ben had been in mall rats and slept on his couch. And then they put him in Chasing Amy. And then he put, you know, Matt Damon in the thing or whatever. I think it was one of those things. A weird thing to be hung up on. But again, you're young and in hollywood i don't fucking know what's happening and again this is years and years ago so whatever before you move on <laughs> let me tell you, you saw all the, i'm like sh- i just went back in time to talk about the bus <laughs> where am i now <laughs> uh let me tell you about our sponsors ladies and gentlemen today we are brought to you by manscaped and i happen to be wearing a manscaped t-shirt uh yeah. to be fair i only wore this not because we're sponsored because i wanted to wear some purple to match the room um but Manscaped makes very comfy shirts as well, it seems. Thank you to Manscaped for turning our loud shrieks into multiple peaks. See what they did there? Shrieking like like from it. cutting your balls into shrieking from other people, fondling your very soft balls. Uh, men, start taking notes because Manscaped accidents are finally a thing of the past. No more cuts and nicks with the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0. This is their third generation trimmer featuring advanced skin safe technology so you can keep your bad boys nice and smooth. The Manscaped Ooh. engineering team spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer ever created and just released the new and improved 3.0. Uh, this is a premium, premium product here. The battery will last up to 90 minutes so you can take a longer shave. I took my time a couple days ago. Everything's looking real nice down there thanks to the lawnmower 3.0 can't do that nick i would if i could but can't how many people have written in telling us stories about how the lawnmower has uh improved their their balls everything really about them um you could join that group of people by getting 20 percent off and free shipping with the code morning at manscaped.com that you can get 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com use the code morning your partner your dick and your balls will thank you the, this copy is just getting more and more like let's just push it you know what i, I mean like people aren't getting caught anymore by people talking about balls we gotta throw the word dick it in there 20 <laughs> off free shipping with code morning at manscaped.com 
Next up, I want to talk about ExpressVPN. We all know that ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online, but there's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Now that so many of us are stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch on Netflix in your area. Uh, we were talking about this last couple of weeks as the last dance documentary had been going on. Uh, you can get it on Netflix in other territories, but you couldn't in the US. So you can use ExpressVPN VPN to, to get in there, trick your Netflix into thinking it's somewhere else, and you get to watch uh, the best documentary I've seen this year. I can tell you that much. Uh, ExpressVPN hides your IP address and lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. Uh, if you love anime, you can ex use ExpressVPN to access the Japanese Netflix, and they have a whole bunch of cool Studio Ghibli stuff over there. Uh, and it's not just Netflix. ExpressVPN works with any streaming service like Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, you name it. It works with it. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason that you should use ExpressVPN is that it's ridiculously fast and there's never any buffering or lag so you can stream in HD, no problem. Uh, you can visit the link right now at expressvpn.com slash morning. You can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Show your support for this show. Watch what you want and protect yourself with ExpressVPN at expressvpn.com slash morning. One more time, that's expressvpn dot com slash morning back to the vlog so when Ru let's just rewind for a second to give you two little things that'll make sense here uh when rufus and C got introduced and he was like you ever see a fat opossum mm -mm. and they started walking and they turned their back on the street at which point the hockey kids were there they went to make their move the leader stopped them they cut a hole in space time they jumped through it uh then we went on the movie then eventually we cut back to the hockey kids being with jason lee all beat up and he's like i can't even trust you guys to kill a woman uh now that they found the last scion, I need to get moving. I guess I'm going to have to send the Golgothan. Uh, from there, then they went back to the movie and everything else. So now we're in the strip club. Uh, like I said, we're around the table, and uh, it's just a lot of dialogue here from Bethany, uh, Serendipity, and Rufus again, setting all this stuff up. I'm gonna throw some things in here because I'm not sure when it happens, but I'm gonna toss them. I'll catch him, you know. The, you know, like Rufus, he wants some book changes made in the Bible, and he's gonna he's looking for Bethany's help here on earth to do that. Of like, you know, he he wants to be mentioned in it, right? Um, he thinks it's fucked up that like the the books jump ahead, right, from Jesus being what. 10 or whatever it was to being 30 no i think uh, that's later that that's a conversation the yeah that's at the fire thing where because right, cool. she's trying well, to come to terms said, though, i'm tossing it all in now Kevin. he's just tossing kind of it in it's it down all right uh, no no okay um so anyways they talk for a while in between <laughs> this thing he's he's back. Salad. you're giving him a cop salad right now he's just they gonna keep, have to eat the cop salad they keep cutting back to the bathroom where the shit's overflowing and it's gonna be the golgothan um again we're sending more stuff up here and it's all happening and yada yada yada, yada. and then uh yeah so then uh james and bob come over like they made us part of the gang yay and then uh the golgothan bursts through the door he smells like shit obviously everybody's like oh he smells like shit because he's made of shit. And uh, then the gang runs over, like, friend of yours? And he's like, no, nah, smoke this fool. So they run over there and start shooting. But we cut to the scene of just Jay, Silent Bob, Serendipity, Rufus, and Bethany watching the destruction happening. And their eyes are bouncing all around, right? And the Golgothan apparently just beats the shit out of all these people. Tim, do you like this? Since they can't do action, they don't show action. Yeah. Well, well, no, because, I mean, it still takes super long. And, like, this is a thing, something for me that just straight up doesn't work, where it's not funny. And the action's bad. So it's like, it's why a, are we going through so much? Like that, what Andy's doing now, that bit works for me. Like, that's funny, but I feel like <laughs> they could have done that for a second, not for yeah. 10 seconds, cutting back, showing all the destruction, going through it all. It's just like, what are we even doing right now? Like, why is why is he made a shit? Well, we're about to find out. Uh, while they cut back, they run to the bar, jump over. There's a, there's CG shit coming at them. They jump into the other side of the bar and uh, Serendipity starts making Molotov cocktails. They're like, what the fuck is this thing? She's like, basically, you know, the hill Christ was crucified on. Outside of him, everybody who was there was a horrible person, rapist, murderers, you name it. Uh, when they were crucified and died, of course, they lost all muscle uh, tension, which meant they they went all their muscles went lax, including the sphincters. They shit all over this hill. So all the piss and shit from these horrible people was on this disgusting hill. Uh, and this is that shit there. Like, it's a, it's a Golgotha demon or whatever. I think it was Golgotha Hill or whatever the fuck it was called. Um... So now it's coming to kill us and all this shit. And while this is going on, eventually, Bob has an idea. He stands up right as the shit demon gets to the bar. He reaches into his coat. He pulls out an air freshener, sprays it in his face. It falls down. How did you know that would work? He shows the bottle to Bethany. Knock out strong odors. Knocks out strong odors. Humor. 
And so that's how they stopped that thing. Um, now okay. we jump. When I said that everything made me laugh, I, I let me take that back. I mean, walk that back. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like the only joke joking thing. Um, but it just takes so long. Like, that's, yeah, it just wasn't, you shouldn't even think it, it's right? like, I asked why is it there? And you gave me the answer why. But like, yeah. that's one of those answers why. Like, okay, but why was it in this movie? Because they're trying to be funny. And it's like, yeah. that's the reason they came up with it. And that reason sucks. Everything about this was bizarre. It was like, a, it was like a dumb thing with a lamer payoff, I thought. Um. So from here now, um, oh, stick with me. Okay. We've, uh, Bartleby and Loki have finished off the movie stuff. They're, oh, they want to, they want to get a train ticket to New Jersey. The train's already gone. There'll be another one tomorrow. I suggest you don't, or it's sold out. I don't want you to, I suggest you don't understand the, or underestimate the drawing power of the Garden State. I love it. Because she's they so turn, serious. They turn and have a conversation real quick of like, well, fuck it. Why don't we just uncase our wings and fly? Like, what do we care? We're about to, and we're about to go home. What do we care if that people know or see us or whatever? At that point, we they get the scary noise and it's Asriel. And he's just like, you want to want, you want to, uncase, you want to want people thinking you're a bunch of fairies now, would you? Uh, he drags them into a toy store aisle, like a Walmart or whatever, a bunch of Mad Men stuff behind him, a reference to the, of course, Mike Allard, the guy who was in Chasing Amy, we didn't talk about, and also drew all the covers because he drew Mad Men uh, or Mad Men. In this aisle, there's the discussion of like, guys, you cannot do this. Uh, you know, I have somebody covering for me in the pits in hell or whatever. Uh, both sides are looking for you upstairs and down. Lucifer's pissed off that you might do what he can never do. Obviously, uh, everybody upstairs is pissed off. They're going to go against God's word. You have to stay off their radar. You walking around killing people. What are you fucking thinking? Like you can't. You have to move incognito. You cannot uncase your wings. You cannot be killing people. You need to just stay off their radar or whatever. Um, it, this is laid out then that you know you know Bartleby at one point is like thank you Ezra you're a true friend or whatever. And so it's laid out like that, you know, it, at one point these guys were cool and apparently they are not cool anymore. So um, from there, we are on the train. I'm trying to think of what the first scene we see on the train, though, is because we're on the train. Everybody's on the train. There must be something there, but it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, at some point, though, uh, we well, the group is what? asleep in the cabin, right? There's a yeah, exactly. Door. But I'm trying to remember what the stitch is. Before we have the walk up of of the different she walks, groups, it's like right. yeah, yeah. Remember, there's that great reveal where Jane and Silent Bob are in the thing, and it's our friend Barry and Larry or whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And but he's like, oh hey, and she sits down. It's it's everybody at the at one table or whatever. It's fucking awesome. I love oh, I love that. How this happens. It's uh, Barry and Larry, and he goes, oh, they said you're gonna fuck them. Yeah, yeah. Jay, <laughs> says, Jay says you're gonna sleep with them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they sit down and they start talking. Um, eventually, uh, Bethany and Barry break off on their own to sit down and have a conversation. And it's a whole conversation about breakups, right? Well, I left off. I mean, Bethany's main thing, I think, when she was talking to Metatron. Actually, yeah, this is how she got out of the restaurant, right? When she was like, you know when a quiet infection destroyed my uterus, you know, and the man I loved left me because I couldn't bear his children. Where was God then? Uh, laying out why she has a, a issue with God or whatever. You cut here and it's that same thing from two different sides. It's both the backstories colliding where, you know, both of them talking about a breakup, Bethany talking about her breakup with her husband and uh, Barry uh, talking about uh, his breakup with God. And, you know, God stopped listening. He kept talking, but he, he got the feeling God wasn't listening anymore. And, you know, this whole more veiled stuff of you know like you know they tell you lies like it'll hurt less over time when in fact it hurts more they're both you know mourning these relationships that are different obviously and they don't fully understand um at some point though they get into you know barry is like why are you going to new jersey she's like oh no you wouldn't believe me if i told you he's like no, yeah try me and she's like i'm going to a church and he's like oh really and it starts and at this point there rufus gets stirred awake by you assume the divine intervention and he comes out to start looking and she continues to lay out the entire thing that yeah she's there to stop these angels from entering the church and point, she's getting hammered and yeah, yeah, they, yeah they've been drinking to, they were drinking over nothing's there, happening to bartleby because he can't you know well, he starts off seeming kind of drunk. It doesn't matter. Uh, but you're right, though. Yeah. And it's also he was straight up drinking, which is I understand, of course, he doesn't have to worry about the not getting drunk anymore. But how is he peeing? Because he doesn't eat because he can't. He doesn't have an anus, but he also doesn't have a dick. So he can't pee. He just like, I, saw, fat. I saw he all. Keep it in. I saw all of the empty beer bottles near him yeah. or whatever. And, and I, I and I think as time goes on, we're supposed to see a huge sort of uh, difference between her being really, really drunk now because mm -hmm. she's slurring and she's feeling good and he's still the same. Like I didn't notice a change in him at all. 
I mean, Greg, I see what you, I see what your point is. I mean, it's the same question I had when they'd show like Vicky from a small wonder drinking. Like, where's it all right. going? Is there, is there mm-hmm. like a pipe that got I feel like plug in Ted explained that in one of the episodes of what was happening with Vicky. He put an induction port in her, and well, Jamie was just abusing it. Fucking small wonder. Why do we bring guys. up this stupid fucking show all the time? <laughs> great show. Great show. <laughs> Jamie was abusing her time. induction port. I don't think that was what Jamie wanted back in the day. <laughs> oh, I bet it was. Uh, anyways, though, in, so she, finally Bethany's like, how am I supposed to stop these angels from entering? And he's like, you know, I, I, I suppose you're supposed to kill them. It's like, kill them? Can you? How would you k- kill an angel? And he's like, oh, I suppose and he grabs a bottle. I suppose it wouldn't be much different than killing a human. Uh, at this point, Rufus walks in and he's like, Bartleby, the apostle. Uh uh, Bethany jumps up and is like, "Oh, Rufus, let me introduce you to my friend Barry." And Barry jumps up, or Barry, Barry, uh, Barth, Bartleby breaks the bottle, jumps up, grabs her, puts the bottle to her neck, and she's like, "Don't be dramatic." And he starts calling. And he, uh, Rufus starts screaming at uh, Bartleby about this or whatever. She puts it together. Uh, she's like, "Get the fuck off me!" He's like, "Oh, for a second, you were you're, uh, ten minutes ago. You were begging me for it, lady." Uh, and he's like, "Loki." Loki gets up. Uh, uh, there's this whole interchange. Oh, the apostle, and like, and he's like, "There's consequences to your reentry. You, you, there's more happening than you need to know about." Yada yada yada. And so they keep falling back, and eventually, um, Jay wakes up, and he's like, "I swear I didn't come with you, Pete. I swear I didn't come with you, Pete." He wakes up. Uh, at some point, he stands up and like, "What? Well, look at these fucking flat levers right here." Uh, Matt Damon knocks Jason out, or Jay out. Uh, this makes Kevin Smith go into Popeye mode. He stands up, you know, starts beating on uh, uh, Loki, throws him off the train. Uh, you know, Bethany and uh, uh, Barry are flying around in there. I think Rufus gets knocked down. She gets tossed off onto a table. Eventually, though, Bob grabs her or uh, grabs uh, uh, Bartleby, and he does this Schuler Bop thing. That's a commentary joke. Uh, and then throws Ben Affleck off the thing. I'll get you for the Shula Bob. Uh, he falls off or whatever. And then uh, Son of Bob gets his first line of the film, right? Lights a cigarette, turns around. There's a dude terrified in the corner. And he, he does the whole thing of a no ticket, which is Indiana Jones, Nick. I bet you didn't know that. Oh, I did not know that. Thanks for clarifying. Last no I'm happy to be there for you. I'm happy I thought, to be there I thought it was you. weird because I feel like in all the other movies, Bob talking's like a big revelation moment and it's weird that they kind of didn't follow through with that unless i missed some time i think we had enough revelation characters in this like every single character has this wow moment where it's like and then you believe in god again so it's i like that i like that it's funny that he just gets to say one line which is a nice cute little reference to the last crusade scene yeah i thought so too it's this and thanks later on and like yeah it's i think you have enough exposition and giant things happening that i didn't need it from because like alan Alan rickman is sort of like that character that's where he's trying to tell her like where the moral compass is supposed to go so i don't think we need more of those greg you're getting there by the way it's mr potter mr potter i'm gonna keep working on it you're getting there i sent away i think that 99 dollars you asked for for andy cortez's school of voices but i haven't heard anything about my first class (laughs) uh yeah we'll get back to you uh so now it's uh uh barry and larry uh bartleby and loki in a parking garage that they've been thrown off and they walked into a parking garage and uh they this is the switcheroo moment where bartleby goes full evil and because loki is very much like dude we need to stop this like you know and bartleby's like no we need to continue to see this through he's like you heard there's gonna be consequences we don't understand and he's like shut the fuck up like we're doing this we're going home like and he lays it out again and like this is one of those moments i i know it's a weird one where I, I don't know how much of it's just the internet being the internet, but people like to shit on Ben Affleck. I think he's really good in this, and I think, I think this is really, really good. It's a really great scene for him here. I love the, I love the escalation and laying it out of like basically like he has infinite fucking patience for humans that you know he he some of them don't even believe he exists. He gives them this perfect plan. He gives them all these chances. I asked you once to lay down your sword, and what happened to us? Our expulsion from heaven. And it's just this like thing of like you really see him unload like a millennia of pent up rage in this conversation of just like i don't fucking care what it costs we are going there we are getting this done and then he has this weird line of like you know when i held that bottle to her throat that bitch's throat you know how i felt i felt righteous and look he's like i've heard a rant like this before what the fuck do you say i've heard a rant like this before you sound like the morning star you sound like lucifer and then he shoves him up and he's like we're fucking doing this we're in the book he's like i'm going back to Milwaukee. he's like the fuck you are you're in this we're doing this we're fucking doing it yeah uh, i got teeth then you how jump stoked to you, how stoked do you think they were that like they got mad and all this like because obviously he was in chasing amy or whatever but he was such a like a tiny role with like two lines yeah but at what moment do, do you think they knew that matt damon had the stuff like before but obviously before goodwill hunting do you do you think they knew at one point he was gonna 
be a name. You don't think you thought he'd do? I, like, I don't think so at friend. all. I I think it was I just like, was... hey, this is my friend. I remember when I met Nick, and I'm like, he's gonna be a name, and then just look, it never happened. Like, there's never people happened. who have potential, yeah, it, it just does happen. not happen. No, the moment. thing is, the thing is, before this, Matt Damon had but had not done. I think the the only other thing I remember seeing him in was School Ties. Do you remember that movie with Brandon Fraser? Is that what it was I called? Do, I do remember School Ties. And I mean, he was an <laughs> asshole. He was like the bad guy in this. And it was it, it was a dramatic movie about Brandon Fraser going to like a, a boys like a prep school. Yeah, he was Jewish. He was like a Catholic. Catholic. Knows that. And then of course they they ostracize him once they find that out. But but uh, Matt Damon's character is like the head antagonist, shithead like leader of all the kids who accepts him at first, and then of course when he once he finds out he's Jewish, basically ousts him. So I remember watching that and being like. This kid's a piece of shit. He's just a giant piece of shit. And it wasn't until like Goodwill Hunting and this movie where I remember thinking, oh, this guy could actually be a leading character. But he he built that career over a long period of time before he got like, yeah. I, don't, I don't think he got really broke in the industry until Goodwill put him on the map, but they won for writing, not acting. And then I believe like Team well, America World Police. Running, I mean, you can <laughs> if you look back. I'm looking at his IMDb. Talented right now, Mr. Right? Ripley, probably his first There's big. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening too. here. Yeah, school ties in '92, but then like you're talking about where it starts. I think where what we're talking about '97 yeah. is chasing Amy. Then Rainmaker in '97, Goodwill Hunting in '97, Saving Private Ryan in '98, oh, Rounders oh, oh. in 1998, Dogma in '99, Talented. Mid- I think that's where you really start seeing it, right? Same I mean, he really he, he broke into like AAA movie. status when he did the Born series, though. I think Born Identity was what like made him mm-hmm. Matt Damon. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's, that's, definitely, really, that's 2002 when he becomes the yeah. action star. I'll, I'll say it right now. Ripley. I'll say it right now. Sam Pryor Ryan, my favorite movie ever. Great wow. fucking movie. Right in now. review number one. <laughs> 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 um, so that's the end of, or at least we're, we've seen Bartleby and Loki be established now. Now we jump back to Rufus. Uh, uh, Jay, Silent Bob, and Bethany, who are off the train. Jay's like, "Why do we get off the train?" He's like, "Simple, you know, warfare. If your enemies know where you are, don't be there." Uh, they're making a fire in the woods. Yeah, Kevin, this is where we start talking about cha- making the changes in the Bible. Um, whatever else is the thing I was talking about earlier that was happening here. But more importantly, uh, Bethany's like, "I'm sick of all the cloak and dagger bullshit. What the fuck is going on? Like, why? What is happening?" And he's like, you're the great, 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 great grandniece of Jesus, right? Because Jesus had brothers and sisters. Oh, that was why the Bible jumps the way it jumps, right? Where it jumps from him being a 10-year-old boy to a 33-year-old man. It's because they wanted to get that stuff out there. And she's like, it would be you know, better understanding of you know what made Jesus Jesus. And he's like, well, no, they took it out because Mary and Joseph have other kids, meaning that you know, on some chromosome level, there are ancestors of Jesus. You are the last scion. You are the that person right now. You have some of Jesus' blood in you, you but like you know, whatever that wouldn't make has her the great line you know, totally stoned just like so that makes bethany part black <laughs> yeah, a great line i laughed so hard at that what was that, that kevin you're gonna credits too oh, nick pop oh there he is uh i was gonna say like that's that's so interesting that like she can bless like like water and stuff because like why why would she she doesn't have any of the divine in her right because her somewhere along the line like it was his like step or half brother yeah yeah but like the the virgin mary didn't have any you, you know what i mean like well, i guess you're, you're, when you're christ came blood out blood of her so, something whoa, made it special whoa, whoa, whoa. well she shared some blood with jesus right when you're in utero you you switch you swap blood back and forth so you assume that there would be some dna exchange back and forth sure, and the other sure. kid maybe half power mutants yeah half power say, yeah, jesus mutants, yeah. jesus blessed the womb you know with his presence yeah. Yeah. So one, anything right. that goes in and out of that womb is uh, is a, capable of turning water into wine, which is why Joseph used to bang a lot of buckets of water. <laughs> I knew. Hey, Joe, do the, I knew. Joe, do the trick. I knew where we were going. Joe, do the trick again. All right, buddy. But give me your, wh- your bucket of water. But why would Joseph do it? Now bucket. her husband. <laughs> which one was? Which one was? Just said the whole thing <laughs> I can't hear you. Wasn't jo- wasn't Joseph Jesus's dad? Yeah. Yeah, but like yeah, so then he he's a, just for sure a normal human. He said whatever goes in and out of that womb is got blessed. it. All right, that makes yeah. sense. There we go. There we go. There we go. But wait, so she's the, the like whatever 20 time great, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't that mean there's an entire bloodline that's also descendants? Yeah, if you remember correctly, guys, this was actually a prequel to the Da Vinci Code, which was oh. exactly what that was about. Yeah, it was crazy. There's a this at this point, Boiler. there's tons of Jesus. Uh, but but Jesus the Da Vinci Code, the Da Vinci Code is Jesus's son or like kids. Which, yeah, feeding there, Kev. 
Butterfinger. <laughs> I'm gaming better with Butterfinger. <laughs> he made it as far as he could into the show, but now he, he needs to pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> what about real talk, though. Why? So why is she the one that they're going after? The third the last. She's the last. The last the the the, she's the only be, one that could do this. So because she's last, she's yes. special. She's Got special. it. Okay. She's yeah, the last, she's the last lineage of the blood on Christ me, uh, around here. Yeah, yeah. I do love the whole. I do love the whole story that uh, that um, Alan Rickman's talking about about like Rickman. Um, can do it again, Greg. Rickman. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. how that's and how we would say his last name. Talking talking about how uh, you know how all of that time period of Jesus' life wasn't talked about because it was it was awful having to tell a kid. Who just wanted oh, yeah. to play with other kids? Like I, I loved all this sort of exposition. Yeah. Really so cool. yeah, as Andy's alluding to, of course, once she finds out she is Jesus's great great grandies, uh, she runs off, uh, runs uh, through the woods. They're like, let her be on her own. Uh, she trips into the water, starts smashing in the water, screaming at God. She hates God uh, for doing this to her. Uh, her. Uh, at this point, yes, uh, Alan Rickman, uh, the Metatron, reappears, uh, walking on water, and be like, he can't hear you. You know, uh, they go into this whole. Th- oh, by the way. Uh, some Hayek told her that God was a woman. And so she refers to God as a she while everyone else continues to refer to God as a he with Alan Rickman making one reference to it later on. And it's very much goes with the Gozerian situation of God is whatever it wants to be. Um, Alan Rickman is like, yeah, he can't hear you right now. That's why we need you. And he's like, she's like, it's not fair. And he's like, he goes through this whole story of, yeah, telling Jesus, you know, that this boy that he was the last son of God and he was gonna have to die for everybody. And him saying, you know, take it back, please take it back. And if he could have, he would have, I'll tell you something I've never told anybody. If I could have, I would have, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't obviously. And how that, yeah, this is heavy, but this is what's needed or whatever. And eventually calms Bethany down, takes her back to the fire. uh, And oh no, I'm sorry calms bethany down and then basically does one of those finger snaps and puts them into a very fancy ballroom uh where it's jay bob rufus at the table jay's got the joint he's like i think it just kicked in um uh the apostles like weren't we just in the woods bethany and uh metatron uh, approach and he's like the voice the apostle uh they sit down and again now it's all cards on the table thing right of just like listen uh, and this is the the hook right of like we don't know what's going on up there. Don't you think we would, this is well within God's purview to stop, but God has been incapacitated. We don't know where God is. God came down. God's a ski ball fanatic. God comes down for these little vacations once a month and usually pops back. He doesn't tell anybody where God's going, pops down here, does its thing, comes back up and everything's fine, but pop down and nobody knows where God is right now or what's going on. And, we don't know what's happening. Uh, we can't find uh, Bartleby and Loki. Uh, we had to call in the Scion to make this happen. So we had somebody on Earth making moves here. But at this point, we're all out of ideas. We don't know what's going on. And so uh, this is when the, uh, Kevin uh, Silent Bob has been carrying a newspaper this entire scene. Finally, like toss shows it to Jay, and Jay shows it to them. Like, well, what if we just go to the church and ask uh, Cardinal Glick to close it, and like not to be open? Like, wouldn't that work? And they think this is a brilliant idea, which I'm like, I don't know. This seems like this seems pretty easy. <laughs> like, this yeah. been a thought, but all right. Not to mention now you got the voice of God just snapping people around. It seems like this is very <laughs> simple to stop, but whatever, no big deal. Um, so now we probably get more. We maybe this is where Bartleby and Loki cross over and pass the New Jersey sign, but it doesn't really matter for the, where we're going. Uh, now we're with Cardinal Glick in his office. Uh, they're acting like they're reporters, kind of thing, asking all these questions about it. Uh, you know, Jay does the thing to Jesus' nipple on the cross. Um, Glick is uh, practicing his putting game and talking about all this. And basically, they finally get to the point of like, hey, we need to ask you to not do this whole thing. He's like, why wouldn't we do this? There's these two guys who think they're or are angels. They think they're angels. They're going to come by and, you know, ruin the ceremony and you need to stop it or something bad's going to happen. And he's like, you're not pro-choice. Are you? And he's like, no, no, not or pro-life. No, pro-choice. You're, uh, no, it's not, not bad from us. We're not going to do anything. It's these other guys. Yada, yada, yada. He's like, listen, Thursday is going to go or whatever it is. It's going to go. Today's going to go off without a hitch. None of you are going to do nothing. Don't worry about it. Who sent you? I love that when he's like, who sent you? And, and Chris rocks pounds on the table and goes, I was sent by the one who is, who calls, I was sent by the one who calls himself. I am works work for Moses. Um, it doesn't work here though. Uh, Glick, uh, tosses him out of his office. He's going to do his whole thing. Uh, they, uh, go to a bar, uh, they stole the putter as well. That's cool. Um, this is where all the plans start coming together. So yeah, Bartleby and Loki are on approach to the thing. Um, at the bar, they sit there and drink for a while. Eventually, Serendipity shows up because she's like, maybe I can help. Uh, Jay, no, Bob 
Jay, Jay and Bob reveal that they've stolen the golf club of the of George Carlin and have it there. Um, what I, the one thing I'll tell you right now, I'll, I'll lay it on the table for you of why I'm confused is like, wait, did they have the conversation like in, uh, two minutes before he did the dedication ceremony? Or am I missing a day of content? I don't think so, right? I, I, I think, think it was, yeah, hours prior. It's fucked very, up. very soon. Like That's really fucked up when you think about hour. it. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, that makes sense why he was so like admin of like, ah, get yeah. the hell out. Yeah. We're running Anyways, every precaution. That, so they're at the bar then. Um, well, I'm going to toss it in here. Asriel shows up right there. And then, but then we cut away back to the dedication ceremony where Glick's giving his speech and he's t- a, a really funny, like cheesy dad joke. You'd have at one of these things about the uh, governor being a Protestant or whatever. We won't hold that against her. <laughs> yeah. He's killing it. Glick's funny. Man. A, I like he's him. an Eagles fan. We won't hold that against totally. him. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Right. 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 Uh, and he says something about, you know, explain, let me tell you a few facts about this house, this, this house of God and Bartleby is on approach. He's like, God's house. God doesn't live here anymore. It's just this fucking dope ass speech, right? As he makes approach up there, like you know, he's turned his back on you, you charlatans, you whatever. You know, a, a speech I'm butchering right now, but eventually security steps up and he looks at his badge. Way he's too like, late. Yeah, totally. Of course, security. as usual, right? What's even happening? Yeah, yeah. Again, this is pre 9 11. We didn't think anything bad could happen to us. Um, security steps up though, and I don't remember the guy's name, but he looks at it, he's like, uh, whatever it is, Mister Mister Bigby or whatever. Like, I think it might be a reference to. Uh, uh, Bill Bixley, uh, right? If he says, I don't remember, but he makes the Incredible Hulk reference here of like, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. And then he just fucking snaps the dude's neck or whatever, and everybody screams and panics. Uh, then we cut back to the bar. Maybe this is when Jason Lee is introduced. Maybe this is when Serendipity is introduced. It doesn't matter. Uh, but at, as I said, uh, now Jason Lee's there. Uh, the bartender is like, How the fuck did you get here? What's going on? He's like, Oh, no problem. You know, how about what? He, he sounds like you've already had enough already. Can I get one for the road? And I, how about a holy bartender? Anybody know how to make a holy bartender? Muse, I know you how to make a holy bartender. And, and, and whatever. Turns around, eventually he shoots him with the Uzi, making a holy bartender. Uh, he collapses. Everybody's terrified. <laughs> Holy bartender. Yeah, exactly. All I the, love the, that delay. Show up to hold everybody hostage, and then like, yeah, with ten minutes too late. Jay's like, I get it. it's a great one. Holy <laughs> bartender. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's what I skipped or whatever, right? Uh, when we come back, they're all seated down. Been, they've all been forced into seats now. And he's like, how about a little television? And I forget what stupid show Jay wants to watch, but he's like, I was thinking more like current events. Dave Turns on the glass. news. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, Grant Hicks there reporting for, live from the dedication where winged men have shown up and are laying waste to everything. Bullets have no effect on them. He starts screaming at the end of it and gets like dragged away. Um, this is – while we were watching this, Serendipity was sending Bob the message. And I've skipped a bunch of stuff here. But it, it, he laid it out, right, of like when they're like, you're a demon. And he's like, I used to be amused like Serendipity. But when there was the war between heaven and, and hell – uh, he didn't pick a side because he he didn't pick a side. And I love the one where he's like, I was an artist. Elvis was an art, artist. And when it came time to fight, he he went, he enlisted in the war effort. I love that. Uh, okay. So obviously people who turned against God were sent to hell. But on top of that, uh, the people who chose no side, uh, who tried to stay on the sidelines and see who won, were also sent to hell. Hence, uh, Azrael being down there. Um, You know, uh, 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 Bethany tries to lay it out right of like, you have to understand, though, this is going to unmake everything. And he's like, human, have you ever been to hell? And he's like, I would rather not exist than go back to that place, which makes perfect sense, right? And I think it's really cool motivation for him. Um, anyways, though, then we watched the thing up there while all that crap was happening. Uh, and serendipity sending the, the idea to Bob to grab the fucking thing. And when I say sending the idea, she's using her eyes and pointing at the fucking golf club. And he turns around. He's like, oh, what's this? And she's like, oh, nothing. I had something in my eye. Now who's a fucking child? He's like, what? You want to use the hit me in the golf club? Go ahead. You know, I'll give you one free swing. And he gets, get it. Come on. Blah, blah. This, this again goes on a lot too long, I think, personally, in pacing. Yeah. But eventually gets Bob up. And then he, he unbuttons his shirt. He's like, oh, I, like, I do like this thing. Licks it, cuts his shirt with his little, yeah, his <laughs> hands. Uh, Bob hauls off, hits him, and cr- c- caves in his chest. But I'm a, I'm a fucking demon. Uh, he falls down. Uh, in the chaos, uh, they all grab the kids with the hockey sticks. Uh, 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 Serendipity screams to Bethany to go bless the sink. She's like, what? Bless the sink. She slides down the bar and does the sign of the cross over the thing. They shove the kids' heads in there. They, like, melt away because it's holy water now, right? Um, that's explained, of course. It's in your blood, you know, whatever. Whatever. You know, it's one of the, you know, fringe benefits of being the great grandniece of uh, Jesus. Remind I did not under- water to wine thing. I did not understand what they were telling Jane and Silent Bob, to, or uh, what they were telling Jay to do. Um, like something when they 
before they dunk their heads in the water, a line was being said to like Bethany. Do what the, think? Bless the okay. Yeah, I do. I, mean, I just honestly, couldn't. My as a kid, I remember watching it and also not getting it. But eventually, I don't even know if it I was just couldn't ca- captions. Yeah, I could. I needed. De- I definitely yeah. needed captions for that. I did not. I had to rewind several times. Sure. Uh, and so then it is. Yeah, that you know. He said it himself. I'm a fucking demon. Uh, and the Cardinal Glick's the kind of asshole who would bless bless his clubs for a better golf game. Um, oh, and there's guys. He was hit with an instrument of God. Silent Bob's an instrument of God. No, the <laughs> golf club. Uh, all right, we got to get back to uh, the. We got to get to the dedication ceremony. So they run over there. And on approach is just decimated. There's people dead everywhere, uh, headless bodies and bloody people, and things are all falling down and shit. And as they get up there and uh, like trying to figure it all out, Matt Damon, uh, Loki comes out. He's already cut off his wings. Uh, he's uh, you know bloodied and drunk now because he's been drinking champagne or whatever. And he's explaining like he just lost it. You know what I mean? After we killed everybody here, he just started you know f- flying around, and getting people off the street and dropping them here too. Uh, you know they should let us. <laughs> this is a you know a millennia of being pent up. They should really let us jerk off. And they all look at him. He's like, oh, step step back. And then another body falls from the sky and lands there and explodes. Um, at that point, Bartleby comes down, right? And he, I forget what he says, but he comes down in this fucking epic pose, the wings going or whatever against the thing. Uh, you know, this scene didn't look horrible on with YouTube uh compression, yeah. <laughs> it didn't look great <laughs> though. Those, those it wings, look oof. Nah. yeah, I yeah, also, I, you know, yeah, right before it when they're flying around, right before he drops it, that yeah. is just oof, that's PlayStation 2. That's <laughs> green, yeah, it, look, it looked like a, a what did it look like? Um, uh, Soul Reaver, uh, <laughs> Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. Like it just reminded me of one of those cutscenes. So Bartleby lands. Uh, he you know lays out more of his plan here or whatever. I also left out when J- uh, uh, Azrael laid out his plan or whatever. Uh, he didn't. He I forget what's the one thing he held back on. Or I couldn't figure out the whatever. He didn't tell him one thing. He's like, I've watched too many Bond movies to know. <laughs> you never reveal your plan, no matter how close you are to certain victory. Uh, at this point, though, Bartleby lands and, you know, starts at monologuing and talking to them. And eventually Matt Damon gets up. He's like, all right, I'm going to stop you. I've decided I got to stop you or whatever. I could. And, then, you know, Bartleby's like, I'm sorry, you lost the faith. Stabs him because he's just human now. He did not go through the archway yet. So he's just a dead sinner outside now. Well, he goes uh, to hell then, right? Yeah. That's really fucked up. But I guess in Bartleby's mind, no he's going to. future spoilers. Okay. What? What are you going to say? I was going to say, well, the future spoilers for this movie or? Yeah. Okay. Saying keep 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 in line with the timeline we've laid out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was like a Dogma 2 or something. Yeah, I was like, was it, are we talking about the series? Isn't that a series <laughs> I got made? I feel like we jump at the, to the end of the movies all the time and talk about it, but it's fine. <laughs> all right, never mind. No, no, go ahead and do what you're doing. I'm just saying being very specific. Okay. Well, I was just saying that... that uh, in his mind, he was gonna erase. He he's gonna erase all existence in a minute, right? So he doesn't care that his friend is going to hell. Well, I, I think at that point, Bartleby just doesn't give a shit about anything. Yeah, all right. I, I think all he cares about is yeah, you know, exist, not having to deal with the pain of this breakup with God. I think is honestly where his head's at. God, the wings look so gross, and they're all meaty and yeah, bloody. Right, uh-huh. yeah. Later, when he uh-huh. grabs it, and it's just the little like stick yeah, part, and it's like oh, oh, doing little spurts of blood or whatever. Um. So yeah, now it's a fight, but they they're trying to kill Bartleby, but they don't want to use the gun yet because they need to do a whole bunch of stuff. So this mainly, is when they hide, we get the we get the joke yep. from Silent Bob where he starts taking his pants off. Yeah, Bob, <laughs> Bob, Rufus, and Serendipity engage. Uh, Jay and uh, uh, Bethany fall back, as you said, and this is where Jay starts taking off his pants. Uh, and Bethany's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" He's like, you, "You said if we had five minutes to live, I, I'd say we only got about five minutes to live." You said you'd fuck me. She's like, "Oh god." And he's like, "Listen, we can either lay over here all, all comatose. We can either fuck right now. We can either we can lay over here all comatose like uh yeah. We can either lay over here all comatose like John Doe Jersey Jersey over there, or we can get to the love uh, get to the uh, fucking. Whatever. He says something weird though because she says, "What did you just say?" And he says the weird thing again. It's a nice way to say fucking. And she says, "No, the thing before that." John Doe Jersey, Jersey is over there in that hospital right there. It, cl- it clicks in Bethany's head. She's like, where's the nearest uh, ski ball? Uh, where's the nearest carnival or boardwalk or whatever? She, he's like, you know, Asbury Park over there. Do they have ski ball? Yeah. She kisses him. They, uh, she, Bob gets thrown over at this point. She's like, Bob, come with me and we're going to run over there. They run to the hospital. And she's like to Jay, 
distract him. Just keep you got to keep him and make sure he doesn't go through those doors. Of course, Jay has not paid attention to anything and does not remember that he cannot, you know, make him a human yet. And so instead, he picks up the Uzi and goes, "Hey, Big Bird, want to count? The, I want to play the counting game. Count the shells, suck a duck." And starts fucking <laughs> lighting him up. And Ben Affleck, you know, Bartleby turns and just shakes his head and goes down on one knee, exposing his wings. And Jay just blasts the shit out of his wings as Serendipity and Rufus come over to stop him, grabbing him. By the time they get there, of course, he's like, out of bullets. This is what you're talking about, right? Where we cut back to Ben Affleck, uh, Bartleby there, who sits back up and is like clearly in pain. And he's got his little thing spurting and he reaches back there and he feels he's got no anything. He licks his hand. He's like, huh. And it's, I, again, I think great acting of like this pain, but his plan is accomplished and everything else. And he starts laughing. And he just, then he goes into like Joker crazy laughing uh, at the sky or whatever, but whatever. He's had a rough day. Uh, then back this at the is a thing for me. Like, as you're saying all this, it's like really kind of hitting me and reminding me that like the moment they get to the church and the angels have their wings, that's where this movie just totally falls apart for me where i'm like this seems like way too big for the, what this budget can actually withstand on top of that you're adding way too many elements you're giving way too many orders to split the characters up there's leaps in logic of her figuring out the ski ball and all that stuff things that are referenced way too many hours ago of us watching this movie like it just kind of feels like it was just bit getting rushed to the end where yes when you say it all beat for beat it does make sense but like it's not really enjoyable to consume hmm huh. I feel like when someone's like, hey, God really likes ski ball, that's a thing that like you're going to remember in passing afterwards, you know? When an angel tells you God it really was, likes ski Remember, it was referenced at the ballroom, like, what? It, that's in what movie saying. time 20 minutes ago, I don't know. Yeah, it yeah. like it adds up. I'm just saying like, it just kind of seems like the flimsiest thing that gets us to yeah, it's, it's, being the big final thing that she needs to go do. It's, it's always weird when, I mean, this is like a trope that people use all the time, but it's always weird when someone says something random in passing yeah. that then gives the other character the piece of the, the missing piece of the puzzle of information. And like, it is what it is that that, that that happens a lot in TV where it's like, oh, my, like when you're watching any sort of mystery show in TV. There's always someone who's like, man, I, I can't find my keys. What did you say? Key. Yeah, That's yeah. the key to the mystery. And it's like, it's <laughs> so fucking lazy writing. But yeah, in but this, like I feel like. I feel like when I got to the end of this movie at the very be- at the first time I watched it, I was like, okay, the dude in the fucking thing is God. Like that's the- that's why God's not here. He's in a coma and they're keeping him in a coma. That makes sense. Yeah. How she would figure that out. I mean, from a random fucking news headline she saw maybe once is beyond me, but whatever. Well, I-, I think that the key part is that uh, Jay says it and he is the, the like one of the two He's prophets, prophet. right? Like yeah. the- their purpose is to motivate the movie. Like not not just the movie, but like, their role is to move this like story this this along like yeah, i also think yeah. too like and I, I and i'm i mean whatever we're, we're i'm not making excuses or whatever but again in their world i think john doe john doe jersey is like terry shivo because remember like in church in the very beginning it's referenced right of like mm-hmm. oh and all a uh, second collection for john doe Jersey. like i think it was national headlines that this was happening to the point of no, I we're talking about how she's heard it once on a news story. I think it was supposed to be more. Everyone's the talking about it. Yeah, in, the, in the newspaper. Well, wasn't she had, in the church when he that. was given the speech? right? But I yeah. mean, like, I think, but she was She was the only one paying attention. You're right. Sure, it's, it's she's like, also uh, totally defeated. Yeah, I hear you. It, it would be like Baby Jessica, right? Or it's like every fucking night there was like talk about this damn yeah, kid yeah, that felt hundred percent, hundred percent. Baby sense. Jessica. Uh, back to my point that we're, we're old. Uh, back to my point. Yeah. I, I hear you, Tim, but I still like this. I still like the way everything comes together. And even though it's not by any stretch of the imagination the tightest plot or anything like that, I appreciate that it is. I, I, it's a movie. Every movie has this. Like, I don't know how you do movies and not have it. Something get mentioned earlier. And what is the one we're thinking of? I'm thinking of like, what? What? Tim, you're with me on a million different shows. What is the one I'm thinking of where there's not a moment? I always say there's not a moment. Wait, oh, Clerks, right? No. What? Back to the future. Back to the future. Back to the future. Back to the future. Thank one, you. Yeah. There's not a moment wasted. Every part, part, every line is something that's is critical to the plot. I'm not saying that's here. I'm not saying that's here. But I still appreciate when a lot of good connections, though. Anyways, uh, yeah, Bob and uh, uh, Bethany run to the hospital. People are being evacuated. This is, this is not a drill. This is the apocalypse. Uh, they run inside and find them. Uh, they're there, and she's like, "I hope you're a ski ball. F- I hope you're a ski ball. F- the ski ball type." Uh, meanwhile, yeah, uh, after he's done laughing, uh, Bartleby turns and books to the doors. 
Uh, it's this dual planes of action. Uh, they unplug uh, John Doe jersey. Uh, there's a moment there. Pull out of stuff as Bartleby's approaching. Bartleby gets his hands on the door. He, uh, back in, with John Doe, he goes, no, no, no. And like this holy light shoots out of him or into him. And one of the holy lights like goes awry and shoots off of his body through Bethany's side. Um, she collapses. Uh, at the same time, the doors are flung open and it's the blinding white light before Bartleby can enter. It is, in fact, uh, God standing there with Metatron. Uh, and it's a lot of Lannis Morissette, as we've talked about before. Um, and Metatron gets a line of like, was Wisconsin, was Mill, was it, was it Wisconsin, was Wisconsin really that bad? Uh, but it is a super sad, uh, moment. I feel personally of, again, this payoff for it. And I think they did such a great job of, I think, uh, stressing that to Bartleby, this was like a breakup, right? He loved God, not sexually, but like loved God. Like that was what his whole thing was. And so again, to get like a one strike policy while you do see all of us morons out here fucking around, doing whatever we want and not being banished, not being burned, uh, that moment of him you know, saying he's sorry and collapsing into her arms, right? And then kneeling down to accept his fate. I, I really connected with and I like this whole scene, except for then the effect of his head blowing up and his chest exploding when she yells. Like that whole thing, I was like, I don't know I needed this literally. <laughs> I get it, but I don't know, you know what I mean? That was back to like how to handle action in a Kevin Smith movie. I was like, okay, like that, that it's a really sweet, tender, real moment that I think could have been done a different way. But we also get the thing of, uh, you know, uh, Rickman being like, if you're not already dead or from another plane of existence, you might want to cover your ears. And Jay's like, what the fuck does that mean? Jay, Jay the entire way is like not kneeling. He's like, Neil, stupid. Rufus grabs him down. Then they, what does that mean? They cover, they cover his head. Who the fuck is and she? Then, yeah, blows it. Yeah, exactly. Blows up a uh, uh, Ben Affleck. Uh, so and it was what, all over. Jay pops back up. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck is going on? Who the fuck is she? What the fuck happened to that guy's head? <laughs> and she kisses him. He's totally chill about it. And then she runs off to go start being a god or oh she walks off in the street actually to start being god about things and this you know destruction she looks around and it's a uh, you know he does the uh wax on wax wax off moment she, it, the camera spins and she fixes everything everything's did, back to being beautiful did all she people like brought back life did she you know do that who knows yeah Kev. Uh, that's that was my question i always thought that she did like brought everyone back to life Me and too. like kind of erase that yeah, me too, because um, I think yeah. it's just too many hanging chads there of like, all right, cool, right. all these people are dead and the hospital got evacuated and everybody knows angels are real. Like, right, that's right, never right. referenced again in a Kevin Smith movie, yeah. Yeah, I, I, outside but, of Jane Bob reference. But, uh, so, like, an interesting thing there that uh, that might lead to that not being the case is I was reading one of the, the facts is the reason that they cleaned up the streets was made – the decision to do that was made during shooting because the shooting at the church went longer than they had um, allocated. And the church was like, guys, like you're being – like." We're cool with this, but you're going you're going way too long now. Like you gotta speed it up. So Kevin Smith was like, Cool, can you give us a couple more days? We'll clean it all up and I'll write that into the the plot so oh, it makes sense. Interesting, yeah. But I think even if that wasn't the idea, like that's what I think it is. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah. Going forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's all well and good. That's awesome. That's great. And then Rufus looks over and he's like, Oh no. And it's Bob walking, uh, covered in blood with Bethany's body. She's dead. Uh he puts her down or whatever. Um and then, yeah, you know, it looks like Bethany's dead, but of course she, we have ways to fix that. Uh, God walks over, uh, kneels down and does, the, this is where the, you know, she does like the pan thing. And is this wax on? Did he say wax on, wax off here? Or it doesn't matter. No, I think uh, it was earlier. It was earlier, right? Because this is when they bring her back and she's like, what happened? It, Alanis Morissette brings her back. Uh, but he's like, what happened? And he's like, "We, she can rebuild you. She has the technology. <laughs> uh, also, also, Alanis Morissette, look, like, uh, spitting image of Meg Turney here. Oh, like, sure. I just, I, I just swore. I, I was like, oh, my God, that looks like Meg Turney. Meg Turney but time also, traveling is God. <laughs> is there, um, was there any story reason for why? Uh, she didn't speak that I missed something. I'm yeah, sure I missed something. Yeah, yeah, I remember early on. That's why Metatron exists because if gotcha, she okay. was to speak, uh, we don't have the understanding or physical fortitude to do it. That's why she. That's why when she spoke, she blew up Ben Affleck. Got it. Yeah, they they, they went, said they said they went through five atoms before they before figured they that one out. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that was funny. Um. So yeah, Bethany gets to sit there. Uh, and God's walking around sniffing the flowers in her crazy sparkly outfit. Alan Rickman talks to her a little bit about it. Um, uh, there's a few different things that happen here. I think this, 
she the boop is at the very end right yeah so like this is when uh, alan rickman is like you know you gotta take care of yourself she's like no i'm very important now right and she i have i don't know i have work to do or some shit like that and he's like no but you know she does or whatever and puts his hand over her her in a very weird way yeah very very aggressively and but I'm again, like, you're putting my hand in a, in a lot of different places where I don't traditionally think the womb is. You know no, I mean, I mean the, but that's right. That's where the womb, that's is. Where the womb is. Yeah, actually, no, exactly. he nailed it. Yeah, but he, he had, like when you touch a womb, gentlemen out yeah. there, if you're touching someone's womb, don't don't go full spread. Of it. Oh, don't go full you're spread because he's getting lips at the bottom there. You don't need. Well, that's my just, thing. Is like, do you think he? I, is that when he does it and like does like a little bit of clinch? I think he might be impregnating there as God on behalf of God. You don't think the lightning did it? That's what I, I mean. She, killed her. Yeah. When she healed, her. but like that's what she, happens. You get killed a little bit. Baby put in you. They do call it a little. No, that. I read it when she waxed on, waxed off the blood. She put a baby in her. Which I was also by the I way thought like Alan this. Rickman gave her the baby because of the grab. No, but Alan Rickman is not God. God. He's the voice of God. You. He's doing God's work. Yeah. The seed of God. God, not the son of fucking Snape from Harry Potter. It's like when, it's like when Joey autographs merch for me and sends it to fans. I autograph that. <laughs> sure. No, no, no. It's like when, it's like when, uh, I have Joey autograph all those checks from you to me. It's you technically autograph. <laughs> Joey is not splitting the money. Uh, so yeah, Bethany's pregnant, and that girl is going to be very important to them down the line. Interested to see Kevin. She, she's. Uh, you know what? No future spoilers. I don't even. Don't even. I, we'll talk about this another day. Yeah. It's, um, it's, I wish they had gone a slightly different route and made some. But well, yeah, you're right. All right. Um. Yeah. So now it's time. All right. Cool. This is all wrapped up or whatever. Uh, they're gonna go back to heaven. Uh, if you want to come, Rufus, get in the fucking church. We're going. <laughs> get in the car. Stupid. We're going shopping. Uh, serendipity. Seeing is how you help. You can come back too if you want to. Uh, Rufus is like, all right, cool. They all start saying their goodbyes. All right, Bethany. Like, you know, you we'll work on those changes for me, right? Crisis of faith over. She's like. Yeah, and he's like, uh, this is where I'm going to fuck it up too, right? Because it's, uh, uh, your beliefs restored? No, but I've got a good idea. Because way yeah. before, he was talking about how beliefs were way harder to change than ideas, right? And, you know, again, I skipped over the whole thing of serendipity. Be like, no religion's gotten it right. Um, she says goodbye, serendipity. She gets in the thing. Uh, Jay and Bob got up. You know, Jay woke up, I guess. And Bob did the little thing. And they're like, you know. Uh, if you clean up your and roof is like if you clean up your language of those two you know i'll put in a good word for you too and bob goes thanks and jay hits him um a lance more set god there is approaches or whatever and bethany gets to have a moment with her or whatever and i think i might have this might already happened but you know it's basically like i know you know like why are we here is the plan the thing she comes up with she, hmm, it goes boop, boops her on the nose which again i think verbalizes is a verbal thing that would blow up bethany's head but whatever yep. I, on, or at least put like a hole for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so they all step into the doorway and they all get a little smiley shot. The door closes and they're gone. Uh, Bethany, Jane, Son, and Bob sit down. Um, <laughs> Jay's first thing is like, we should go to the quick stop because <laughs> they're back in Jersey, obviously, for the first time in quite some time. And then, uh, yeah, you know, Jay says something to Bethany. He's like, you know, you can't talk to me like that. I'm going to be a mother. You, you're pregnant. You know, I heard you have sex into the third trimester. <laughs> so we get <laughs> uh, <laughs> out of it and the pain of the church. And then that is dogma. Like I feel, I do feel dogma. bad for Bethany in this, right? Because she's been through this pretty traumatic thing. She's had a loss of faith and then the faith is restored. And then after all of this violence that she's seen, and you have to imagine it's pretty traumatic. She now has to deal with a kid. Oh, it's like the worst possible the worst, thing. But worst her, her loss of faith was due be, like, because she lost the ability to have children. No, her loss of faith was uh, she had lost the ability to have children, which is why the love of her life left her. She, I don't know that, that she necessarily wanted a kid so much as she wanted sure. the option to have a kid so she could keep her man, which was like, mm. at the end of this, I'm like, did you ask her if she wanted a kid? Because maybe she doesn't <laughs> want a kid right now. She's maybe got she a kid in the bloodline. Everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah but that, that, that should have been my choice. It's the same with Mary. Mary Wait, didn't want that when, kid, but then when, all of a sudden her mom's blessed that everyone's trying to fuck her so they can make milkshakes out of the You kids. made that up. You made that up. That's not what happened. I went to Catholic school. Do we know what? Whatever happened to Linda Fiorentino, right? Dead? She burned out. Time travel. Last movie, 2009. And the movie before I, that was 2002. I, I looked it up. So she, I read this long article about um, her and a few other women. And apparently, I don't know. They, they didn't. They don't have any proof of it. But they talked about how she was, quote, unquote, difficult to work with. But then the article went into the idea of, like, what that word meant and how it played into, like, Me Too and the Harvey Weinstein stuff. And so I don't know if she got caught up in that. And it was just super certain producers kind of ousted her right. or if she was in fact difficult to work with because Tommy Lee Jones apparently didn't want her back for Men in Black 2 which is why she didn't come back 
he had it like actually written into his clause. Like I will come back for men of black too, but I do not want to work with her again. And I don't know if that's because she was mean or, um, you know, he, they talked about how she was a little bit unprofessional on set, but you never know. Cause that's the quote unquote true. unprofessional on set was just yeah. a way for people to be like, she won't fuck me. So I'm, she's done, you know? Yeah. Uh, but who knows? She had I a good career. Know, seems like a complete asshole, a like, great actor. Well, what a complete asshole. So I'm sure that's what it was. Did you ever hear that Jim Carrey story from Batman yeah. forever? Yeah. Where he's just like, a dick to him for no he's like reason. I'm a huge, Jim Carrey walks up like I'm a huge fan. He's like I don't respect you and I hate everything you do. And he's like, all right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah on this picture. That was fucked up. It's a little haiku in review. Seven syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku, haiku in, in review. review. Haiku, haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to leave your reviews in haiku forms just like Bumble Boy Wonder did. Whoop, whoop. one-liners. Makes good points on religion. Holy bartender. John Lestrina says, Jason Lee is great. Was that Andy or Alan? This is number <laughs> one. Great. great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Ricky McFly says, a shit demon. Wow. That meant demon cameo in Thor. Makes sense now. So there we go. That's it. Ragu bagu baby. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ragu Bagu. That's Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within the podcast where we rank all the villains of the View Askew universe. I'm one of your hosts, Greg, alongside Andy, Kevin, Tim, and Nick. So far, volume nine of Ragu Bagu, as I only acknowledge the ones I'm on, uh, has it like this. Number one, the biggest villain inside the View Askew universe, Holden in his male insecurity. Number two, Shannon and Michael Rooker. Number three, Dante, his own worst enemy. Uh, guys, who is the villain of Dogma, and where do we rank them? The Asriel... Asriel, right. Nick, you said something. I would say yeah. I mean, this one actually has literal villains in it, so yeah, Asriel, um, and I would do say probably put, Bartleby. Do we put Bartleby in it? Yeah. Do we put Bartleby yeah, in it? Definitely. I think so. Because I feel like yeah. he is, a, even though I feel like he's a well-written villain, I feel like you can sympathize with why he's frustrated and why he feels the need to do what he does. But yeah, he still is a bad guy in this, um, as is Loki. Even though Loki has a bit of a redemption story, so yeah. I would say Loki, Bartleby. Uh, Asriel, and for good measure, to, uh, Greg, uh, central heating, central air, and uh, heat. Like, thing, I, I don't want to put Loki in. I mean, Loki, well, Loki but, does you know, shoot up a, a whole lot. Yeah, he and, kills like, a lot of people. They're bad people. He's but, the, yeah, he's the angel of death. He's doing his God, his business ordered by God. Like, I don't count that as a villain move because when it's revealed that, hey, you're going to end existence by doing this, or at least there's consequences. Yeah, he tries to stop it. He's the first one to be like, whoa, we shouldn't do this then. Greg, listen, I love genocide as much as the next person, but I just don't think it's necessarily something that's a positive thing, you know? This is why you want to last one second in the New Testament. It's true. That's why I'm in the Old Testament. That's, I think it's the opposite, right? The Old Testament no, is all about genocide. All right. Where Definitely do you want to where, where the argument for putting our trio here, even though I do not recognize Loki? I'd say number one. Yeah, number I one. They're, they're really, I mean, classical villains. I think you, I think these, yeah, they're classical villains, but I think Wolden fucks up his life way worse. He could have had a nice life with Yeah, Alyssa. but it's just his life. These guys were going to stop all of existence. I'm not, like, it's, they're, they're, you know, they're Bumble Boy well, Because they were stopped by uh, the last Scion over there and Jay and Son of Bob. Otherwise, but they would have won. It's not, it's not only that I, I, obviously Holden did fuck up his life or whatever, but I, I like Ben Affleck's performance here more. I like Jason Lee's performance here more. Okay. Um, I respect yeah. that. All right, then. I don't agree, but number one, we're going to put the trio from Dogma. That's fine, Greg. You don't have to agree. It's okay. Hey, well, man, we it's a democracy. democracy. You know what I mean? This isn't a democracy. This is a cheerocracy. No, I, I literally just said it's a democracy. We just <laughs> voted. I like now it's time to rank the viewest universe. Uh, currently, number one, we have Chasing Amy. Number two, we have Clerks. Number three, we have Mall Rats. I would put it below Clerks, but above Mall Rats. I would say so. Yeah, yeah that sounds me, right. That about right. Well. Like, I think this is a good movie. I do, but I think it's overly complex. And I think that at the end, it's just not as entertaining and cut and dry as Clerks uh, or Chasing Amy. I think those were... A lot, I think the themes for those movies came through a lot more because of the simplistic nature. And with this one, I think obviously this is his most complex and philosophical film. 
But as a dumb idiot that I am, I started blanking over after a certain point. I'm like, I get it. Religion's bad or maybe it's good or I don't really know. I'm not truly sure what message I'm supposed to be left with at the end of this film other than like, I guess that last line was important where he's like, ideas are good. Faith is bad. I don't really know. We're supposed to have faith. Who knows? Like I, I just, it's convoluted for me, but I do find the movie. I think the movie is very, very well made and very, very like the writing's good. And the characters are, I mean, this is the first movie that has really, really good actors in it. It's just, I don't, I still prefer clerks over this. I would put this uh, over clerks and mall rats. Um, I just think, I think I was just entertained the whole time, you know, with clerks, I found myself fading out. Um, uh, so much of the so many of the aspects of clerks whether it was the acting or the i mean mostly just the acting let's be honest like <laughs> the the acting in clerks is pretty pretty awful uh and i just found myself like okay this is this is as enjoyable as chasing amy uh in my opinion i might even put this above chasing amy i don't know yeah the that's the thing for me it's such an interesting uh, so much like the flowery language that kevin smith is known for and uh, that we see in the other movies, but I feel like now it's the flowery language that's also adding with a whole bunch of uh, mythology and like various mythologies being all added together. So there's that extra level of exposition, which weirdly allows this movie to have individual characters, which is a uh, criticism I've had of all the other ones that they all sound like they're all the same character. This one, at least I feel like there are different characters, but then it, it works against it for me in the sense that the characters I like, like Silent Bob, I feel like gets treated lesser than in this movie. And I feel like, he could have wrapped some things up better in this that would have made it a lot stronger for me of what Nick's saying about like, what is the moral of this? I feel like that we could have had some stronger elements um, if they just made some wiser choices character wise. It's tough. Uh, Cause you know, I think out of the view skew universe so far and probably even onward, but like, well, maybe not, who knows? Uh, you know, Mallrats is such, my favorite right but i think when we do this i start thinking about like what a, is the better movie right i think that's why chasing amy stood out so much uh last week in terms of uh yeah in terms of you know a plot a progression where it's going what it's doing and i think it, when i start grading on that it I, dogma gets in the running for number one because i do think that yeah it's doing more complex things and sure it's not succeeding at all of them or whatever but i think about what you're saying tim of first off people feeling different and not just sounding like they're coming out of kevin's brain necessarily but then also like the way this comes together and has so many moving parts, right? And like actually feels like for better or worse, I know we're talking about like, you know, uh, ski ball being this thing that's mentioned like three times before it becomes the key to the entire thing, feeling more like a whole movie to it. You know what I mean? Because that's my problem with Chasing Amy where I think just getting back to it. Like granted, it's a real hang up people had or whatever, but it was such a weird thing to hang the movie on, right? Of just holding me in a bitch about shit. Whereas this one, I feel like having actual villains like we're talking about an actual antagonist, right? Things being moved. I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna I'm gonna vote number one for Dogma. You think number one? Yeah. Yeah, I think I was I, I'm with you, Greg. I'm I was kind of more impressed with the level of difficulty in making this movie good yeah. and entertaining, and I think they succeeded. I, I think it's hard to make a good movie with so many different moving parts and and trying to uh, you know and, and do it in a way that doesn't feel like it's talking down at you. You know? Yeah, my. I, I see all those points. I think just for me, I wish the movie weren't as literal. I wish I wish it wasn't literally the biblical characters telling you about the Bible. And I think that to to I think that that that's a certain level of storytelling that obviously Kevin Smith really wanted to do. He really wanted to play around with these characters in real world settings from the Bible. But I think I just wish it was set a little bit less literal and these characters weren't literally the I mean, the, the manifestations of themselves from the Bible. Um, I do like that they kind of modernized it a little bit. I don't know if we talked about it or not, Tim, but the idea of uh, the fact that the halos were all the hoodies that they were wearing, all angles and all that stuff. Um, something that's cool, but I, w I wish they would have taken a few more steps to that and not had it be like the literal word of God and all these things. I think they would have been a little bit more um, impactful and a little simpler with that. But, I mean, this is the story he wanted to tell, and he's sticking to it. So it's uh, time to vote. Or God, do you want to say Oh something? yeah, I was just gonna say like I, you know, I, I kind of feel like one over. Like this is such a, I, I enjoy these movies so much, but after thinking about it right now, I, I do feel like this movie has moved up in my like my personal ranking. So surprising. Let's vote. Who thinks it's better than Mallrats? Raise your hand. We all raise our hand. Who thinks it's better than Clerks? Raise your hand. Kev, Andy, and Greg, raise their hand. Who thinks it's better than Chasing Amy? Raise your hand. All three of them. The new rankings are number one, Dogma. Number two, Chasing Amy. Number three, Clerks. And number four, 
Mall Rats. We will be back this Friday with Transformers the movie, the 1986 animated one, and then next Tuesday with Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Only three more movies left. Wow. Hump. This is the hump day of the Kevin Smith. US Everybody game. humped tonight. You know what I'm saying? Put your fucking hump on, guys. Until then. Nugans. <laughs>